Hello and welcome everybody, it's your boy Logic and we're back with another multiplayer tournament here with the Short Beard Tournament. I hope all of you are doing very well. It looks like here we have CJ, how are you doing? Hello there sir. We're also going to be having a fellow Dowie here with Mr. Swiss Pikeman. How are we doing? Kadane, Down Under Blunder, Mutluck as well as Sub Nova. We're also going to be having the big Parker Riller in. How are you doing? Hope you're doing very, very well. Zypha and Bibbington in the chat of course. Butcher Bird, how are we buddy? Hope you're doing really well today. So um, let's get into this. So in the semi-finals, we are going to be having Campbell Bob up against AIMA. Now he has a very, very long name that I don't know how to uh, how to pronounce. So how shall I say this? Aimer. I'm going to call him Aimer, and I hope that's okay. I'm going to call him Aimer. All right. So let's have a look at it now. Very, very quick overlook here. Um. I'll pick Empire, Band, Dwarfs, and Dark Elves. Yeah, two commands indeed. Looks like Bretonia will be the counter pick. All right, we're going to be on Oak and Hammer. Let's rumble into this. But how's everybody doing today? How did you guys enjoy the tournament for those that did participate? And how's everybody else doing otherwise? Hope you're all having a fantastic evening. Alrighty, so this should be uh, pretty fun. I'm very excited here. So what is the Shawby tournament? What is it to you guys? What does it all mean? Just call, just call him TN Logic. Perfect, we'll call him TN indeed. Okay, TN. Uh, I haven't checked, CJ, I will be honest. I haven't checked the build you sent me. So the Shorby tournament here is going to be all brand new players here going up against each other to try and see if they can gain some more experience with players that are also new as well to, to kind of stop them from meeting all of some of the better players here in the community that play in uh, my other tournaments such as Battle Mania. But here we are going to be seeing some companions of Kunel, very nice units here coming in from Tien. He is going to be having these bad boys which are anti-large armor piercing and also have good fire damage with that immune to psychology and also I believe they have a blessing of the lady for 20% physical resistance. Once we have some questing knights here, good anti-infantry armor piercing, very good cavalry indeed. Heads and bowmen, so we're going to have one pox, two pox, three pox. I believe there was some more there in the front. No, maybe not. But we're also going to have the, oh, very nice, the Holy Wardens of Las Maison Tau. Very good with the magic hammers and the flaming swords. Also going to be coming in with the Men at Arms and some Battle Pilgrims. Very good on their leadership there, 82 leadership. We're also going to be having 90 here from the Holy Wardens. Five units in the front line here, Peasant Mobs. And it's like four units of poison range. And we are going to be having a Damsel of Life. Damsel of Life on foot will be coming here with the Dwellers Below and also Earthblood. So we're going to have one field trebuchet. And in the sky, we are going to have King Leon Kerr and the Paladin. Now, I'm sure the Paladin here, yes, will be coming with Guardian and Leon Kerr here today. If we can get in on him, flying here nice and high in the sky. He is going to be having the Sword of Corone, the Lion Shield, Stand Your Ground, Foe Seeker, the beloved Son of Bretonia, and also the Ladies Champion. So excellent stuff here from this Bretonian build. Now for Cowboy, for the front line, we are going to have the Unbreakable Flagellants. Very good. One, uh, made that two there with the Tatter Souls as well for those increased stats and the extra bits and bombs. The Unbreakable Sigma Suns. Lots of Unbreakable here, taking certainly a page out of Mr. Artisan Tech Priest West's book. So five units of Unbreakable front line here, mixing in with the War Wagons. These boys are, are they the, uh, no, they don't like, they're just going to be the gunnery version. So they have some sort of like uh, sniper rifles here. Very interesting. Um, and we are going to have some more war, can, war wagons on the right. Volkmar the Grim, one of the uh, strongest lords here in the game, going to be on his war wagon. He's going to be having the Grand Soulfire, the Grand Shield of Faith, the Grand Hammer of Sigmar, as well as Banishment and the Jade Griffin. So pretty good stuff coming in there from him, about 2.4k worth from that. We're also going to be seeing the Spearmen here. One, two, three units of Spears. Make that four units of spears here, just gonna be normal spearmen, no shields. And also the Royal Outdolf Griffites. Now this is a bold selection indeed. The bad blue boys here looking absolutely goddamn gorgeous, these things. But they come in with that terror, anti-large and armor piercing. God, these things are just so goddamn look good looking. And for the magic today, it looks like we're going to have uh, life magic, which is quite interesting. Regrowth as well as earth blood. Now that makes sense here with power stone and life bloom. So we're going to be putting a lot of regrowth here on the raw Aldolf Griffites. And uh, we're just going to be supplementing the front line of the unbreakable units of flagellants. 
Uh, yeah, it should be pretty good in general. We're also going to have the uh, three wall wagons as well, so lots of healing there. Volkmar will heal himself, so you probably don't want to heal him too much. But otherwise here, looking pretty damn good. Oh, actually, it looks like we're going to be having three wall wagons. Are we going to have the ROR? No, we're not going to have the ROR, but still good nonetheless. Fantastic stuff. So let's get into this. So we're going to be on Oaken Hammer. I really like this map. It's pretty flat. It's pretty open. It's a good map to start on. How are we doing, Katam? Hope we're doing well, buddy. Hope you're having a fantastic evening. Uh, has someone put hairs on their chin? No, I've always had a pretty hairy chin. I mean, maybe it's got hairier over time. <laughs> but I've always had a uh, pretty hairy chin. I've been just, uh, you know, been grumbling more recently. You know, the more I grumble, the more I grow. Uh, Banners of Power here is uh, not going to be favouring the Empire. It, it never really favours Flagellants, because I'm not really sure why. Maybe it's something to do with the armour values, uh, but uh, it's going to be very difficult for them to... They're going to have to really get in the back line and shut down these peasants. Uh, they're certainly going to do some good work. Field Trebuchets, I haven't seen them fire yet. They've got 440 range. The fact that I haven't seen them fire yet is quite interesting. They're still not firing there. So coming to the front line... Poison arrows should do some work against the war wagons, but they're not going to do too much. A nice banishment in the back here. Oh, there we go. So they are going to be flinging off now. I actually can't see where they're aiming for. Uh, there's really not much to shoot here. There's no backline range from the Empire, which I kind of like as well. They're just going to be having the war wagons. One war wagon is certainly taking a bit of a punching here. Coming forward is going to be King Leon K. You have to be very careful with Volkmar the meme. And Volkmar is using the Grand Shield of Faith. 20% physical resistance in that radius. Looks like he's going to be terrifying all sorts of units here. Now the Paladin does not have any immune psychology and it's not going to get it from King Leon Kerr until it just dropped below 50% uh, health I believe actually, not leadership. But it looks like here uh, the uh, anti-large, oh it's just armor piercing King Leon Kerr is going to be coming into the war wagons. Now the war wagon is certainly to shoot, it comes in with the Royal Outdorf Griffites, they'll be coming in with the Grand Hammer of Sigmar. Sword of Crone going down though, so both going to be getting hit here very hard. Big shots coming in the back here of the King Leon Kerr and this is starting to turn into an absolute massacre here in the middle. It looks like here we should be getting some regress in. Healing as well from both sides. Stand your ground. Going for the extra melee defense as well. Winded is going to be Volt by the Grim. And it also looks like the Lion Shield for that magic and missile resistance. Magic there, very good up against Volt by the Grim as well. As a negation of 40% there is going to come in. Let's get in on the Royal, Out, uh, the Royal Outdolf Griffites. They're going to be having a regrowth on themselves. They're going to be getting hit pretty hard there. They're going to be down to 20 more models, down to 24. They're really going to be fighting hard here. All are fantastic as well as below going down. And it's like we're also going to have a Grand Soul Fire doing damage here. I think it's anything that is an Empire. And this is just a mash in the middle. We're going to have guns shooting in the pocket. We're going to be having all sorts of artillery here fighting against the war wagons as well. They're going to be piling in. They're going to be shooting relatively hard here. And we're going to be having broken units of Battle Pilgrims. 80 leadership for them as well. I mean, it's very, very difficult. Now, Bombard the Grim is going to be getting uh, dunked on here. Uh, he's certainly going to be struggling. I didn't see what happened to the Royal Outdoor Griffites are going to be going down. They are going to be uh, breaking there and running away. That is going to be Voltmar very uh, exposed here. He needs to be able to pull out through his spearmen. Now we do have the companions of Quinell. They are in. They are going to be fighting. 200 arrows coming in as well. And that will be Volkmar the Grim Dan. As you'll notice here, that's negative 16 leadership here. But they need to take out the big bad boy, King Leon Kurt, for that trade. Now I think an earthbred there and all sorts would have been quite nice for him. But it looks like it was favoured to go on top for the Royal Outdoor Griffites. Now it looks like it is going to come and try and see if we can snipe out up against the Jade Wizard. Can the Jade Wizard just try and see if he can keep cycling around here? Yes, yeah, so okay, he's going to fight there. And you don't want to fight the War Wagons just as long as the War Wagons are there. They're not super slow. They have 50 speed, so they can move. These boys can certainly sh shoot and move all at the same time. It's like big gunfire here as we do have the Sigma Suns fighting up against the Damsel. Damsel has some okay stats. 42 melee uh, attack here should allow her to do some good damage. But only 22 melee defense. So she's not the, she's not the most tanky, that's for sure. Now, the Jade Wizard here from Cowboy Bob is just going to be in and around, just aiding and just uh, being protected here by the War Wagons. Charging in is going to be the Questing Knights. Good armor piercing from them. The Royal Outdoor Griffites are going to come back in, though, for the attack. Stand your ground, Foe Seeker going down. Do we have any buffs here? Looks like it's just going to be an Earth Blood. A single one as well. I think we would have risked the Overcast there, in my opinion. But it looks like we are still going to be fighting. King Leonka is going to be exposed. And we do have a good number of 19 models firing 
on all cylinders here. 52 anti-large armor piercing as well. Coming in to save is going to be the Paladin, but I don't think the Paladin is going to do too much. We certainly need some Knights in here to assist as well. Phantom Power, though, is going to be here in the Bretonian favor. As we can see, King Leon Kerr is going to put up the Lion Shield. He's not going to get shot quite so hard. 40% negative to resistance there, which will put him up to 55. But he is certainly going to be struggling here in the pocket, that's for sure. Now, so we have some companions of Quinell. They are going to come in anti-large and armor piercing. Perfect. They're dealing with war wagons. 90 armor and big and large. These bad boys are going to be firing in, though. Where is King Leon Kerr? King Leon Kerr is going to be 266 health, and he will not regen if he is broken. Now, he will be getting his map wide buff there due to the beloved son of Bretonia. That's a plus eight melee attack, immune to psychology, charge bonus, and base weapon damage for the entire army. That is one of the nice things of bringing that. Now, he will regen as he is coming back here into the fixture. I imagine he should do. He should heal. Uh, looks like the war wagons here are going to be retreating. Is that going to be terror? No, it's not going to be terror. It's just going to be broken. Uh, why is he not healing is the question. So looks like the rest of the army is going to be fighting. Let's get a look on Leon Kerr. He's going to be a key attribute here. So leadership is not broken, but he's also not healing. Um, this is meant to be constant. So that's a glitch there for Leon Kerr that I've just noticed. So we'll send that off because he's certainly not healing. And he's on 10 leadership, so he should be. Shots are going to be piling over the top here. And they're going to be trying to fight into the flagellants. Flagellants will stand to the absolute last model as they are unbreakable. And they're going to be fighting here. Look at the uh, the war throne right there. But it looks like they have managed to break the battle pilgrims. Leon Kerr did heal a little bit. But I think that came in from the earth blood rather than actually coming in from his ability. And it looks like here in the back though. Still firing is going to be the field trip. Yeah? You need to get something in there. The outdoor Griffites would be quite a nice one to try and sit and get in the back and do some work. But they are going to be protected by the questing knights. Questing knights should be able to finish them off. It looks like the Dance of Life is going to be in the trees. And what have we got going on here? Frontline is going to be firing into the Naked Spears. They do have 30 armor, but they have no shields. So you're going to be feeling the full volleys here coming in from the Peasant Pox Arrows. Shots also going to be firing here, it looks like, into the Damsel of Life. It looks like he is back. He's still not healing. I'm very surprised at that. That's um, It was working before the patch, that's for sure. Looks like here we have Shattered from the Holy, uh, the Holy Wardens of the last Maison Tal, but you need to deal with these Questia Knights. Something needs to deal with them. That is the win condition here for the Bretonians. The win condition here is going to be the Royal Outdoor Griffites. They're going to be firing here into the Damsel. If they can kill the Damsel, it is probably game over, I would have thought. Arrows are going to be coming into the War Wagons. War Wagons certainly need to fire here into the Questia Knights, try and take down as many models as they possibly can. Once they've lost that mobility, this bat line will get shut down. Spearmen in the back are going to be fighting up against Pox Arrows. So we have one, two still left online, though. Coming in here, though, still going to be shooting. Poison going to be all over these models. And uh, what do we have left here? Looks like we have six models at 550 HP. We still have the Jade Wizard. She could do with certainly doing an Earthblood here in the front line, perhaps to aid. But uh, looks like it's not going to be too much. You can certainly have Jade Wizard on Jade Wizard action. They're going to be coming in here. Let's have a look. Charge in from behind. Uh, not doing too much damage, I don't think. Not successfully hitting. Oh, that's a nice hit, though. That's a nice hit. That could break there. Punch back in the face as well. And it's going to be 25 melee attack on 30 melee defense. And 42 melee attack on 22 melee defense. So it's going to be... Um yeah, it's going to be a bit of a backhand fight going on here, but fire shots going into the back of her as well. She has broken, fantastic. Now you've just got to chase her off to stay away from the peasant mobs. These sweaty peasants are certainly going to do some work in the later stages, but they don't really have enough armor here to deal with the war wagons. You now just need to cycle charge into the peasant pox arrows, and you should be able to finish this game out, I would have thought. Really don't want to get your jade wizard surrounded, though. Looks like she's going to be getting surrounded. Good charges here coming in. Fantastic stuff there for the war wagons. These boys are certainly meaty and very hard to bin in. Looks like here we are going to get the pocket arrows into melee as well. And this is a super tight game here. It's like cycle charging here going into the top against the Peasant Pox Arrows. Once you break some of these Pox Arrows, balance of power will shift very heavily. And the beloved man of Bretonia is coming in. King Leon Kerr, Stand Your Ground, Folk Seeker and the Lion Shield coming down to really aid up against us. So we have broken the War Wagons here. No immune to psychology. They're certainly going to be doing the uh, very, very good work of the Bretonians. 480 health left for him. And only Sigma on the side of these war wagons. And it's like the Sword of Crone is going to go down. They are going to get caught. Are they going to continue to shoot, though, is the question. It looks like here the war wagons have come back. They are going to be fighting up against Leon Kerr. If Leon Kerr dies, this is game over. That will be negative 16 leadership. Fans Hammer is massively, though, already has shattered. But it is going to be massively in the favor of the Bretonians. Okay, we do have the Jade Wizard back online. Can we take care of the Field Trippages? It looks like here we have shut down the Peasant Pox Arrows. 
It's looking very, very tight here, though, in the end stages. We actually do have some Spearmen in the back pocket here. They can certainly do some work. Jay Wizard could really do with healing itself. If the Jay Wizard could heal itself, could be very good here. Could be very good. Or maybe get a heal on these bad boys as well. So it's like we have broken the Pox Towers. And look at the Banshee Tower. Just massively shifting there because of all their ammunition. They're going to be holding a lot of that value. As you see, Peasant uh, Bowman here in their melee stats. 18 melee attack, 6 melee defense. They're going to hold absolutely nothing in the balance of power. We still have shots coming in from these very expensive war wagons. And we should be able to see it out as the Empire, I imagine. Oh no, the Peasant Pox Towers have come back. This could be dangerous. This could be dangerous. Shots flying in though. That should be balance of power. And that's the game. What a fantastic game! What a fantastic game. Awesome stuff. Really good stuff from Cowboy Bob and really well played to Timo. Oh, Tian, sorry. I thought I said I thought it wasn't Tina. Tian. Um, so yeah, Volkmar the Grim, 1,035, and they were part alongside the Raw Outdorf Griffites for 1,700 damage value. Really nice stuff there, good Earthbloods as well, 285 for the Jade Wizard, 520, 280, 440, and 420 here from the Spearman, very nice stuff. 120 kills for 580 for the Flagellants, 733 here for the Tatter Souls, 580 here for the Sigma Suns, 900, and 700 for the Rear here for the Flagellants. 1,670, 1,570, and 1,370 here for the War Wagons. Don't see them often, but wow, it was fun to watch those today. It really was fun. Uh, 2,600 for King Leon Kerr, no joke from him. 750 from the Paladin. 1,200 here for the Dams of, of Life. A really nice dwellers below there. Fantastic. Uh, looks like the peasant mobs didn't do too well. 190 here from these peasant mobs. Not bad. 100, 117, and 103. You'd never thought you'd see peasants paying for themselves, but uh, today they're certainly going to be. Uh, 600 here from the Battle Pilgrims. Uh, 145 here. 145 kills, 920 damage value from the Holy Wardens of Last Mace on Tau. 150 for the Men at Arms. And this is what counts. So the back line range, 860, 340, and 560 for the peasant pox arrows. And 840... And 153 kills, 1,100 here from the Questing Knights. Companions of Quinell, 2,050 damage value. The Companions of Quinell are probably my favorite cavalry here for the Bretonians. I think without a doubt in their faction, this is their best cavalry. But um, I'd be more than happy for people to tell me wrong. And uh, 1,031 damage value here for the Field Trebuchet. Excellent game. So we'll move on here to the next one, which is going to be the Blood Pine Woods. Let's, let's get it. And then we'll catch up with you guys here, since like quite a lot of you have joined. So the Blood Pine Woods is in. And here we go, game two. Let's see how we're doing. GG, well played indeed, Muck Luck. I, it was a good game indeed. It was a good game. I haven't seen Tian too much. It's permanently disabled when he breaks. Oh, does it? It just says not active when broken. That's generally how I thought it worked. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Hey, bud. How you feeling? Back to normal, I hope. Is, is that in regards to Mikro or are you asking somebody else? Sorry. Oh, no, uh, oh, for Poland. Sorry. Yeah, for Poland. Yeah, it's all good now. Uh, oh, I hope you're all well, Full Poland. Hope you're well, buddy. Oh, Logic, what do you think about the aspect of the Dread Knight spell? Fantastic update. Fantastic update. Love it. So everybody that's watching today, I really hope you are enjoying the content here on the channel. If you are enjoying this live stream, please feel free to smash that like button. What that will do is it will promote the channel as an interaction. The more interactions I get, the more YouTube spread it out to the wider community. So I would really appreciate it if you did that, if you want to support the channel some more. Also, smash a, like, smash a dislike if you don't like it as well. That also lets me know that you don't like this content, and then I know going forward. And also, if you're still enjoying it and you really, really do like it and you'd like to support a little bit more, maybe smash a, uh, maybe smash a subscribe. That would really help as well because I really want to grow towards 1,000 subscribers so I can become a partner with CA and then also become a partner 
with YouTube. I'd like to do both of those things for the Warhammer 3 so I can bring you guys all of the brilliant content coming forward here for a Total War Warhammer 3. So if you guys want to do that, that'd be great. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, I always like saying hi to you, Crow. <laughs> I probably said hi as well, to be fair. Um, oh, I just saw that now. Yeah, that was. Uh, I think we just started there, but yeah, I hope you're doing well, buddy. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> but yeah, if if any of you guys do those things, that'll be uh, that'd be seriously awesome. I'd really appreciate that. For anybody that might not know what this is or what the short bid tournament is all about, this is going to be... So the Fresh Recruit League hasn't gone on in a very long time. Uh, so this is essentially going to be a very similar thing where this is going to be the tournament that's um, going to put people into different uh, categories. And what it's going to be is there's going to be sort of a... Um, a sort of ongoing uh, league, essentially, where this tournament will put people into their league, um, their specific league sections. There'll be like four different leagues of four different varying abilities, and you'll, hopefully you'll be able to play new players, should be able to roll in into the bottom league and keep continuously... Hey, Reptilius. Uh, no, that's not correct. Hey, Reptilicus. How you doing, buddy? Hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, so what it should do is, depending on how well you do in this tournament, it will depend on what league you go in for the future. And then every single week, um, you'll play against people in your tournament with the, with the uh, chance of getting promoted and a chance of also getting relegated. So you'll have the opportunity to hopefully play week in, week out with people at your ability level. And if you get into the top league, if you get into the top league, which I will go through very soon, and you get promoted, you'll actually leave the short bid tournament, which means you'll be going on. There will be a tournament within the short bid that is open to everybody, and that is at the end of a season. So it'll all go through seasons like I do with Battle Mania. Once you get promoted, you can take part in that one, and you can also take part in things like Battle Mania. And the whole idea is, is you keep improving through the ranks, and then once you've left, you should be good enough to be playing in all tournaments everywhere. That's hopefully the idea. And then all new people will start from the bottom and work their way up and through. Yep, uh, why is there a beer tournament and why are you not automatically the winner of it? Well, listen, listen, I, I, can't, I can't be the winner of, uh, I, can't, I, can't, I can't win a tournament I host, that would not be fair, would it? <laughs> Hello friends who are, whom I've mostly not, not met. Did you just uh, see the channel on YouTube or did someone suggest this? A Reptilicus or, um, yeah, I hope, you're, um, hope you're doing well though. Hope you hope you're enjoying your stay here on the channel. That's a good move, newbie league. Yeah, so essentially it will be like a newbie league, but it will be called the it will be called the short beard league, and it will start at the very bottom where we have the Urkram miners, and then we'll move it up to where we have the warriors of the Dragonfire Pass. Above that will be the Grumbling Guards, and then we'll have the Peak Gate Guards, and then you guys will fight in each of the leagues, and then you'll keep competing every week. Now let's say for a specific season, let's say like Kadena said that he can't play for a short while. Okay, that's okay. I'll freeze your slot in there. I'll put somebody else in in that time, and then what I'll do is I'll slot you back in when uh, you're ready to go. And then we'll we'll move it around and jig it around a little bit. So what it should do is allow new players to come in and uh, continuously keep playing against. Uh, players at their at their level and should hopefully you know give you guys some confidence to move on and start uh, taking on some more tournaments for yourself as well um and yeah it should be should be really fun awesome and then the way i'm going to run it every week is i'm going to do um there is a football show on TV called The Match of the Day. Now, The Match of the Day is a football program that basically leaves you the highlights of the week's football. And what it does is it breaks down. Instead of watching a 90-minute game, it will break it down into, like, two minutes. And it will give you the highlights of all of the games. Like, you know, it'll give you all the goals. And it will give you all, like, the, all the awesome tackles and all, all sorts of things like that. Or all the game, or like, all the game-changing decision stuff. I'll be doing something like that for the Shorebeard tournament as well. So every single week, you guys will have an update. I'll go through each of the leagues. I'll go through all the matchups that happened on that particular week. I'll uh, break it down, do a very short two-minute clip of each battle, uh, quickly going over some of the game-changing things, uh, how it was won, what the army composition was very quickly, and then, um, and then yeah, so I'll update that in sort of like a half an hour to hour sort of program for you guys to watch. And then uh, what it will do at the end is I'll go through the table, go through my predictions, and then we'll talk about it going forward and how these guys are progressing through the league. So hopefully that should be uh, quite fun for you guys to watch.
Match of the Beards. That is the one, Subnova. Match of the Beards. That's what that's what it's going to be called. Or Grudge of the Day. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah, that'd be so cool. Match of the Beards or Grudge of the Day. That's awesome. I love those, man. That is so cool. This is cool. I've been away from the big, big, big multiplayer community for quite a few years. I haven't touched Total War, and it's very nice to see innovative incentives like these. Yeah, cool, man. And I, I want to try and get people back in it as much as possible. And I want people, like, if you've come back in and say you've got lots of experience, maybe I, I, I'll, I'll see where you were at, and then we'll, I'll decide where I think it's best to put you. <laughs> no, that's not true. That's not true. And, like, the thing is, is you're just going to get snippets of things. So it might be just like, oh, you know... Um, there was a very good cavalry charge here that allowed you to get into the back pocket and do this. You know, and there'd be small clips of what happened what happened there. Um, so I should be able to condense that into, like, little sections. So we'll go through, like, the Oakland Minor League, what happened there, what the, the overall scores were. And the way it works is you'll do a best of three with everyone else in your league. Um, how are you doing, buddy? This is Tian. When will we be starting? I think we're both ready. Uh, Bob's got to ready up. Bob's not ready up. Sure. Sorry, I didn't get a notification that I got sent that. Uh, what I'll have to do is for you guys, I'll have to put on a picture image. Let's see what we've got here. Oh, I like that. We'll throw on that one. Nice. Just check the Cowboy Bob's one is legal. They're both ready. Let's hop into this. Steel Bonnet is a man of many names. The Parker is a man, and the uh, the Steel Bonnet. They're his two different um, two different personalities. All right, uh, good luck, have fun, you too. Oh, that's very nice of you, Mr. Muckluck. All right, so it looks like here, oh, we're gonna be having a coattle. These things are super, super cool. So you'll see here, I have this, which is called the Master of the Sacred Places. Now that has stalk for everything in a 40 meter radius underneath it, which basically means your opponent cannot see Mazda Mundi. That's very cool. Also comes with a Urian's Thunderbolt and also comes with a Lesser Chain Lightning. So very nice there from itself. Uh, very expensive, that also causes terror, magical damage, good speed, and armor piercing as well. So it looks like you're going to hide the big, bad Lord Mazda Mundi. Oh no, thank you very much, thank you very much. God damn. That's why I don't like screen blockers. I do apologize. So... Yeah, I know, right? Um, so the, with the collateral, this thing is just so goddamn gorgeous. The ROR is really nice. So you can see here the 40 meter radius, everything under there has stalk. 
It comes with the Orion Thunderbolt, which is a magic spell, and the Lesser Chain Lightning, Terror, and good all armor piercing in general. Lord Mathemudi here will be the Lord, on top of Zlack, who is the true leader of the Lizardmen. Don't let anybody else tell you otherwise, because that is true. But he will be having the Ruination of Cities, the Banishment, the Shield of the Old Ones, Apotheosis, Harmonic Convergence, Net of Amatok, Cold Blooded, Sunburst Standard of Exotal, and also the Greater Arcane Conduit. We'll have Source Warriors here on the front line, quite a lot of them, including the Skink Cohorts, the Umbral Tide, the Hunting Packs here. Very nice. These bad boys are certainly very good looking as well. They're going to come in with that Perfect Vigor Fear, the Anti Large Missile Slots that come in with Fire and Armor Piercing. So, very nice in general, as well as the brand new Chameleon Stalkers here. Now, these bad new boys are a little bit like Blasting Charges here. So, they come in with two very heavily missile strength exploding charges with physical resistance and they can fire whilst moving so they don't have to be standing they can shoot and move and shoot and move with these very nice exploding attacks so quite the nice army in general we're also going to have three units of the pterodon riders with rock drops in the back and then we are going to have the skaven build so for the skavens we're going to have the wolf rats here in the middle we're going to have a pretty cheap front line of uh, skaven slingers and we're also going to be having some skaven slaves more skaven slingers Lots of slingers and lots of slaves going to be dotted around the pocket. The Ishka's triads, as well as the Council Guard Storm Vermin with some Poison Wind Globes in the back. We're also going to be having the Ikit's Zap Zap Cannons. And in the pocket here, we are going to be having the Double Chieftain. They're here going to be on their lovely mounts. Uh, they're going to be coming here with the Power Grab and the Shield of Distraction on both. For the Lord Choice today, I can't actually see him. He's going to be here on the bell. We are going to have the Grey Seer Plague. The Grey Seer Plague here will be having Vermintide, the dreaded 13th spell, Unholy Clamor, and also Scorch with all the other good bits, including Wall of Sound. Now, shots here are going to be trying to fire into the Coatl. Looks like a lot is missed here. That first one hits, but it's really not doing much damage. So, Master Mindy is going to be getting away here scot free without any damage. And incoming here is the Terror Riders. Now, Poison Wind Globes are not going to do well up against these boys, I don't think. They are going to hit, but they're not going to do an amazing amount of value. Skaven and safe slingers are nice. Like they're not some cheap at dealing with very lightly armored skinks, but they're not good otherwise. They're really not good, I don't think. Uh, they're going to be left on skirmish mode, so they are going to be running away, I think. In the front line, looks like we've already beaten the Skaven slave spears in the front. They've broken relatively quickly here. Now, the Cancer Guard Storm Vermin are unbreakable Storm Vermin with Halberds. And it's like here, the Terror is going to be going on the top. It's going to fight against the Skaven Slaves here in the forest. And in the back, it looks like here we're still going to be having the Zap Zap Clans online. Now, they certainly need to fire into Master Mundi. Master Mundi has taken lots of damage so far. We also have the Armor Piercing Hellions here coming in as well. They're going to be fighting. And Shield of the Elmer's going down. That's going to be plus 20% damage resistance, 8 leadership, and 480 from the Apotheosis. Uh, so we're going to have a nice ruination of cities going down the pocket. It's going to kick you up against the Skaven Slaves. I think putting that there on the Council Guard Vermin would have been a little bit better. It looks like here we have had Lord Mazda Mundi. He has got trapped in the pocket here fighting up against the anti-large armor-piercing Council Guard. And what you really needed to do, you needed to get your tail drum riders here in the back and shutting down this pocket. They're going to be fighting here up against Skaven Slave Slingers that aren't really going to do any damage here up against Mazda Mundi. But these cannons have absolutely decimated Mazda Mundi. It looks like the Wolf Rats are going to be fighting here up against the Source Warriors. They are going to be the Poison Variant, so they don't have much armor piercing, so they could struggle there. It looks like we do have some Terror Riders coming back into the pockets. But we are starting to collapse on the Skaven here just a little bit. It looks like here we do actually have some Skink Cohorts. We also have some Chameleon Stalkers in the back that could do with really moving around the flanks here and shutting down these cannons. It's like one cannon has been shut down. Uh, the second one is going to be a little bit glitched out, and the other one's really not going to be firing. So it's going to shoot. It is going to hit Master Mundi, I think. Master Mundi is going to be on 383. That is actually going to break him. As we can see here in the pocket, the Gracia Plague is going to be fighting with its anti infantry. It has such annoying attack animations. Look at that. That attack animation is so irritating because you can't. It's so difficult to pin in place. It really is so difficult. But on top of his bell, it's just going to be wrecking Source Warrior infantry. We still actually have the Council Guard Storm Vermin in the pocket, really not doing too much. Not that it really needs to. But we're also going to have the Clan Rat Spears here, just screening out up against the Chameleon Stalkers. Shots going in the sky here from the Pterodon Riders. And it's like that we do have some Scaper Slaves in to assist. And they do have Fear, so that'll be negative 8 leadership here for this bad boy. So that's 23, 25 leadership here for the Scaper Slaves. 
bit of damage there, and they should break. Master Mundi has died now, so the, the Sat Sat Cannons have done, and that'll be negative 16 leadership map wide here for the Lizardmen. Shots are going to be going down on the standing still, Teldrum Riders in the back. And it looks like here. It looks like here. It's looking pretty dangerous, I think, for the lizard men. We still have some source warriors. They're pretty good standards. They'll hold for us some time. But we need to take care of the Zap Deck Cannons. It looks like here Tian has gonna is gonna drop out, pardon me. And uh, an excellent game in general. 472 here for Lord Meister Mundi, 131 here for the Umbral Tide. Love the new little symbols for them. Uh, 430 here for the Coatl. Not too short up to the Coatl, but it's very healthy. But 165, 72. But 130 kills and 148 for 300 damage value and 400 for the Chameleon Stalkers. Uh, very good at clearing out Shaffer. They could certainly see these guys coming forward for sure in this meta. Uh, 100, 180, and 530 here for the Source Warrior Shields. 270, 750, and 258 here from the Terranal Riders. Uh, how could it have been played a little bit differently here? I think you m you needed to get the terminal riders to shut down with their with their rock drops. You needed a rock drop here on the Ischus triads and the and the council card vermin, and then you probably needed just to just do anything you can do to shut. Yeah, two thousand four hundred damage value for the Ickets zap zap cannons. They they needed to be shut down using the terminal riders, I think, or you needed to get in the back with the chameleon stalkers. That, that that is something you needed to pressure in the back there, I I think. But uh, 413 for the uh, Gracia Plague, 1,470 here for the Chieftain, and it's like 370 and 397 here for the Wolf Rats with Poison. Frontline really didn't, was never really going to do too much, just like 117, uh, 102 for the Clan Rat Spears, 340 for the, uh, for the very nice Eshen Triads, 500 for the Council Guard Storm Vermin. 144 here for the Ishkos Triads, but it's like they're very healthy, it's like they didn't get involved too much, but 18... 140 and 31 here for the Skaven Slave Slingers. Bit surprised to see these in this matchup. Maybe here to deal with Chameleon Stalkers and the rest. Maybe. Maybe here to deal with just Chameleon Skinks. Not too sure. But uh, 840 and 262 here for the Poison Wing Globes. And yeah, 2440 damage value from these Zapzak Cannons. Excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. I don't know how to pronounce that, but I'm going to try. Uh, Thon, Thon Noin, how you doing, buddy? Hey, Logic, I have never participated in a tournament before. Would love to participate. When is the next one? I can do non-meta builds. Should be the other bid. Should the other bids be short too? <laughs> Hey, buddy. Well, what, what I get you to do is join onto my Discord. Hopefully, Zypher or Biblington can just smash in a um, a uh, Discord invite there for you to join up. That'd be fantastic if they can do that. Yeah, that's what I thought, Cowboy. That's what I thought, yeah. And then we'll get you in, and we'll get you in for the tournament. I'll start you at the very bottom. We'll start you with the Urkram Miners, and then you'll be able to build your way up and play against uh, some newer players as well. So that should be quite fun for you. Uh, sorry, I see a couple of questions here. Can you see the Quartal Flying Snake itself? No, it doesn't. So that, so that is the uh, that is like the downfall there from that is the fact that you can see the quattal. So if you shoot the quattal and kill it, obviously then you'll start to be able to see everything below. So it looks like Artisan is going to be in, and he is going to be fighting up against Dilatron. So let's get Dilatron in. Now is Dilatron going to be online? Dilatron, I don't see you, buddy, but uh, hopefully you can join up there. Oh, thank you very much, Muck Luck. I appreciate that, buddy. Uh, yep, yeah, so you should be able to join up there, and then we'll get you in and we'll get you involved in the new tournament, which will be really, really cool. All right, so we'll put it here. Cowboy Will coming in with a big 2-0 win, so awesome stuff from him. That'll be him going through there to the final... So, uh, yep, yeah, that'd be really nice from him. And it looks like here... Yeah, so just need Dilatron in. That's it. Oh, Dilatron is in! Fantastic! Hello, hello. Let's have a little look here. 
So it is going to be Dilatron to pick and ban first. Hey, how would you do a clan mate Cyrus do? Uh, yeah, he did pretty well. Uh, let's see how we got on here. So I believe... Did he get through to the round three? Let's have a look. No, so Cyrus went up against Artisan Tech Priest West in the first round, unfortunately. Artisan's probably... Uh, he's a very good player here in this tournament, I think. Uh, but 1-0 uh, there, unfortunately. In the first round. Amazing, dude. Thank you very much. Also, uh, feel free to just, you know, smash on the subscribe as well. Because if you do that, it'll let you for all of the videos I'm putting out, all of the live streams as well. Um, Mr. Sun of the Mountains. Because then what that will do for you. I'll also smash a few in the Sun of the Mountains Discord as well. So you can check those out. Um, so what you should be able to do there is just maybe try and see some of the metas here. And, and just see roughly what people do, what people play. It can be really, really helpful. Yeah, thank you very much, Cypher. Just going to change those now. Uh... It's fine. Dilatron. Fan Dabby Dozy, so we have Ogunhawa, it looks like here. Uh, I'll go Empire, Band Dwarfs, and Vampire Counts. It looks like the counter here is going to. <laughs> it looks like here the counter is going to be Dark Elves. So Artisan is ready, uh, Dilatron is ready, so let's hop into it. Dilatron is an Empire and Chaos main. Yes, yes, he did say in the uh, in the chat. Hey, Ruben, how you doing, buddy? With respect, Cyrus lost in the second round. Indeed, indeed he did. Indeed he did. Indeed he did. But uh, any sort of level you guys get today and wherever you go in and go out, not everybody here is even. Some have had more experience than others. My Artisan is a new player, but he has had experience in the WWC. He also plays relatively regularly, so he's probably going to be in probably the top bracket. He's probably going to be in the peak gate guards. Uh, so I think anybody here that is going to be coming top four today will be guaranteeing themselves a slot in the peak gate guards. Then obviously they have to maintain that. So that will be going forward in the future as well. So let's have a look here. So we are going to be having the Empire here with Dilatron. And uh, Dilatron is going to be having, let's have a look here. Let's get through nice and quickly. We're going to be having, looks like, five units of the Flagellants. And looks like four units here of the Halberdiers. And five units of Spearmen with Shields. Also going to have a Light Wizard. And we're going to be having a Bright Wizard. No, it looks like it's just going to be a Light Wizard with the Net of Amantok and Exorcism. And it's like Marcus Wolfheart will become the Focus Shot. Hunter Snare and Stalk. Very nice indeed. We must be triumphant. It looks like here in the back as well, we're going to be having one, two units of the Huntsman and also the Silver Bullet handguns. I've been at three units of Huntsman, sorry. So, oh, we're going to be having the White Wolves. Very interesting. So, I believe the White Wolves come with immune to psychology. Yes, so they come with immune to psychology. 
and I believe uh, that's pretty much the only change apart from stats. So anything here that does have triple gold chevron, so anything here that's ROR immediately gets the triple gold chevron stats, and it will also get extra bonuses as well, such as immune psychology and encourage on this one, which you won't be getting that here for the normal ones. So bullets actually have magic ammunition and stalk compared to their normal handgunner brothers, so they're going to do pretty well here in the pocket as well. So for the Dark Elves, pretty common here from Mr. Artisan Tech Priest. We know these pretty well. We're going to be having some Witch Elves in the front. Five units of these naked ladies. They can do pretty well here with their Madness of Cain. So what does Madness of Cain do? Now this is an ability here that forces something to rampage for 15 seconds, giving it negative 20% speed, negative 10 melee defense, and they will just rampage into whatever is nearest to them. So they'll basically just run and attack whatever's nearest to them. So we're going to be having the double Caphalite Assassin with the Dark Venom Assassin's Trophy and also Web of Shadows for those slows. Yeah, both on that. And it looks like here we are going to be getting Marathi on the floor. So Marathi here, she is going to be having the Wand as well as Soul Stealer, Power and Darkness, the Heart Render and the Dark Sword, Enchanting Beauty and a Greater Arcane Conduit. Now Enchanting Beauty and also the Heart Render and the Dark Sword give a combined negative 20 melee attack negative 10 melee defense in a 40 meter radius now that's huge but here in the back as well we are gonna have the cold one dread knights very good armor piercing shock cavalry so we're gonna have three of those bad boys is it gonna see four no it looks like it's just gonna be three so quite the uh, relatively elite build here both are really good luck have fun so let's smash on straight into this i'm in love with this build <laughs> That is two nets, yeah, Butcher, but that is two nets. You're allowed, you're allowed two nets. Oh. All right, if you can hear anything in the background, it is my computer yelling at me. I'm not too sure why it's yelling at me at the moment. But hey, going forward here, it looks like we are going to have the lovely ladies coming forward. Shots are going to come in. And it's like some of the shots here from Marcus Wolfhart are going to be aiming, I would imagine, at Marathi. Marathi needs to be the target here. If you can shoot down Marathi and kill her, it should be quite nice. Well, 5 out of 10 for the COD K. What's the COD K? Oh, looks like focus shot is going to go down. What's focus shot going to do here? Focus shot, straight shot. Oh, big smash in the face there up against Marathi. That's a really nice focus shot there. Excellent stuff. Kiting as well, shooting here. Looks like it hit Marathi in the face yet again. That's actually going to put Marathi on quite a bit of health. So Soul Stealer here can heal her for sure. Um, oh, net going down here from the Cold One Dread Knights. Very nice overcasted net there for the air of effect. So normal net just casts one unit, overcast it, and you actually get a air of effect net, which nets everything in that area. So it looks like here, we are going to have the Witch Elves fighting up against the Flagellants. Now they don't have any melee defense anyway, but they're certainly going to come forward here, and they're going to do all sorts of damage here up against each other. So there's going to be two melee defense here, I imagine, fighting up against the melee defense of the Witch Elves. Charging coming in from the arm piercing Cold One Knights as well. They're really going to ram over the top and aid as well. There's some nice assistance from that infantry as well. We're going to get some shots here from the Witch Elves. Sorry, some shots from the Catholic Assassins over the Witch Elves into nice Marcus Wolfhart. It looks like the Cold One Dread Knights have been hit relatively hard here. It looks like the uh, Silver Bullets and some of the uh, Batline range as well is going to be getting in and shooting there. That's a very nice net coming through. Like some of the shots are coming over the top here. Are they aiming for the assassins? Not too sure what they're aiming for here. It's quite hard to see. Oh. Oh, this. Okay, that's a glitch. That's a glitch. That should not happen. So it looks like we have the wand coming down here from Marathi. That's going to hit up against the huntsman in the back. Looks like the spearmen are still going as well. Going running away is the bright wizard. The bright wizard got hurt pretty badly here. He's going to be getting shot by the Catholic assassins. They can take care of him, that's one net gone. It looks like here, Power and Darkness is going to go down on the Catholic Assassin, which means it will damage him in exchange for gaining Winter Magic. Banners of Power here is going to be in the Empire favor, but losing your caster could be pretty costly, I think. Shots are coming in for the flanks here from the Huntsman, so we are going to get some more State Troop Infantry coming through to assist. 
Rampaging here in the middle is going to be the Spearman. They're going to be fighting here up against the Catalyte Assassins and the crew. Soul Stealer has now gone down in the pocket here to do some damage. That should hopefully heal the lovely lady herself. Vanspar are now going to be going into the Dark Elf Ava. This is really back and forth here. Looks like we did actually mention the Bright Wizard back. They are going to be chasing up against Marcus Wolfhart as well. Assassin's Trophy going down on him. Uh, there could be a net coming in here. So there is going to be a net on one. Shot's going to go down on the Light Wizard in the back here from the Catholic Assassin. And what's going to come through here? So it looks like Dark Venom on himself. I'm not sure what this is going to be here. Is this a Soul Stealer? No, it's a Web of Shadows. Okay. In the front line here, though, looks like we are going to be losing some Witch Elves coming around. Some Witch Elves have been rampaging. Looks like we have rampaged some of the Cold One Dread Knights as well. When they go below a certain health, they have a very high chance of rampaging. Our Halberdiers are going to be going down. Looks like we still have some Witch Elves dotted around. But this is where the battle is going to come down to. It looks like we have a very weak Marcus Wolfhart going to be getting shot here by the Catholic Assassin. Oh, Focus Shot going to come through. Can it hit the Catholic Assassin? Big shot. Oh my god, that hit so much damage. That was an incredible amount of damage. Fantastic stuff. Looks like here we could be losing the Light Wizard. Assassin's Trophy going down on him. Shots are going to come in as well. He should break in. Negative 11 leadership. Us. Poison going on him as well. So that should be him done for the remainder of the game. So we've got some Flagellants in to fight up against the Cephalite Assassin. He has broken. He's going to be down to 238. And it looks like here Marcus Wolfhart is now going to kite up against the Cephalite. He only has 70 range compared to the 180 of Marcus Wolfhart. So Marcus Wolfhart can now just shoot these two entities uh, pretty comfortably. And it's really interesting. It looks like in the net he's going to be going off outside of the circle. Which is a bit of a glitch of uh, air of effect spells at the moment. It looks like here we are going to get some state troop infantry. Some spearmen and some halberdiers coming back into the pocket. We are going to have the last unit of which I was here really trying to fight where they can. So it looks like we're going to be losing one of the assassins here for probably one of the light wizards. Shot gonna, oh, that's a big hit to the face there for the Catholic assassin. So 800 weapon strength here up against 390. Is that going to be another spell? It's another net coming down on top of the Catholic assassin. And it's like Marathi is going to be busy dealing with infantry over here. She's going to be coming in and just slamming here. Up against the Huntsman, going to be giving them zero melee attack and nine melee defense. I'm giving the Spearman here zero melee attack and 32 melee defense. Just showing how powerful she is. They're going to do no damage to her because they have no chance of successfully hitting her. Looks like here, Spearman are going to be fighting up against the Assassin. Assassin is going to do his absolute best here to fight where he can. Just going to be getting shot here from Marcus Wolfhart as well. So he did get hit. Big one there going into the Spearman. And it looks like it's going to be Marathi versus the world, I think. When this all blobs up, yeah, lovely Soul Stealer. Lovely Soul Stealer. That's going to heal up ginormously here. She's going to heal up very much here. That's also going to damage all of these entities in the pocket, including the Flagellants as well as the Halberdiers. They should break momentarily, and then they're all going to be fighting up against all of her negatives. Over here in the back, though, just like Marcus Wolfhart is going to be shooting into the broken Cafalite. The Cafalite assassin now is dead. Oh, shattered, shall I say, but he should die relatively quickly here from a shot. Marcus Wolfhart still has lots of ammunition left. He's pretty much the only one that can solely take out Marathi. If he can get some shots in, it looks like it's going to be game over here. It's a big shot. Big Kobe coming over the top. Well, the Kobe is going to come in, and it is going to miss. Now, it looks like there's going to be lots of range that's going to be firing. It looks like we have two units, including the White Wolves, that are going to be firing in here. They're going to be shooting straight into Marathi, and they're just going to do lots of damage. Net going down as well. That is a shame. So we have the Bright Wizard back as well. Unfortunately, there was just nothing to chase the Bright Wizard off. You needed something to damage Marcus Wolfhart. You needed something to chase off the Bright Wizard as well. And that probably could have been games. I don't think the State Troop Infantry would have been enough to stop Marathi. But that is going to bounce the power, and that is going to be a very interesting and very, very good game. Very bold and brash builds. I like this. Yes, indeed. I loved. I love both builds. And um, this is a very standard artisan tech priest West build. And as you can see, 241 kills, 2,100 from Marathi, 500 and 1,125 for the Cafalite Assassin, 723, 900 here for the Witch Elves, with also 660, 970, and 700 for the Witch Elves. 
950, 280, and also 1074 for the Cold One Knights. Very nice for Master Santec Priest, and it's like 2620 for Marcus Wolfheart. Uh, 120, 300, 190, 233, and 320 for the Spearman. 235, 316, 475, and 600 here from the Halberdiers. 500, 440, 458, and 480 here for the Fagellan. So doing pretty well overall. Some good damage and very consistent across the board, which is nice to see. Um, and looks like we're also going to be getting 1,400 here from the Tata Souls. Excellent work. 1,200 for the Huntsman, 900 here for the Huntsman, and it's like we've got 550 from the Silver Bullet, and 1,145 here from the White Wolves. Very good. So looks like we have a couple of things in the chat. Uh, yeah, very nice game. Very nice game indeed. Very good pinning down of the heroes and stopping them from getting in, and the cavalry really had to help the front line there. Couldn't really get around in the back and shut down. So I've got to send a couple of messages. Right, okay. Um, so, in theory, there's a potential rule break here. I wanted to play it out because if um, the Dark Elf player did win, then it doesn't matter. But being that the Empire player won, I have to check the rules. I believe on the area of nets, I have to double check this and I have to see where it is. Um... I believe you can take nets, but I have to double check this. I'm not too sure where this is going to be. Mm -mm -mm. So, for example, for the dwarfs, they can take two slows, but slows and nets are very different things. Um, so an army may have more than one net, but no more than one between lords and heroes. Okay, so I'm going to send that in here. Just going to very quickly take a picture of that. I'm going to very quickly send that to Dillashon. Right, so it is a it is a rule break. So just give me a moment, guys, while I very quickly sort this out. Uh, where is Mr. Artisan Tech Priest West? That's okay. Right, just waiting on a response here from Mr. Metal Knight, or Meta Knight here.
All right, so the decision has been met. It looks like here we will be giving the win to Dilatron. Thanks to being very kind here from Artisan, he is going to give the win. There we go. So, people are still playing multiplayer. Uh, I admire them. Multiplayer is fun, dude. I, I think it's still. I think this is still working pretty well. I think this this is the new player tournament, Mr. Sergeant Spaghetti, at the moment. So we're uh, it's looking pretty good. So for anybody here that might be new, oh, Mr. Blackthorn, how are we? Yes, uh, yeah. So we have the uh, the brand new short beard tournament, Mr. Blackthorn. This actually might be a tournament that uh, could hopefully move quite nicely. Um, so what's going to happen here is in the short beat tournament is for brand new players, players that haven't had much experience here in the Warhammer community. And this tournament here is to uh, essentially uh, see where people are at in the moment and then they're going to go into several categories. So what it will be is there's going to be four different leagues where these newer players can go in depending on their skill level. And they can play against other people and there's a chance of promotion, relegation and the opportunity to try and move up and around and play against people of their own abilities. And when they get promoted from the top tournament, they actually leave the uh, the new players tournament. Uh, they'll, they'll leave the Short Beard League, essentially. So it's going to become a league. They'll leave the Short Beards League, and then they can go and play in my other tournaments and, and get involved with all, the, with all the bigger stuff. So there's going to be a nice space for these guys to uh, get involved and uh, play up against some other new players. How are we doing, King of the Dead? Spaghetti! <laughs> but how you doing, Blackthorn? Hope you're doing really well. Is, Lunar, is a Luminarch love rule? And walk grinders. Quite quite my bro. Slash duck. Slash ling. Oh, is that from Kadane? Yes. The duckling indeed. The man, the myth, the duckling. Cambodian fishing village simulator with all those nets. Yeah, so the way it works is you can only take one net between your lord and your hero. You can't take any more than that, but you could say take a net on your uh, hero and then say take like a... Um, what has an imbued net? You could say take the... Um, oh, I forgot what it's called. Luminarch. You could take the Luminarch and then that could take a net with it and that would be fine. Matching skill is always good assurance. I'm enjoying a lot Torch campaign right now. Awesome, dude. I'm glad you're enjoying the campaign. Awesome stuff came from that DLC. I'm I get campaigning player syndrome when the DLC drops. Yeah, no, fair enough, dude. Enjoy it. Enjoy it, man. Enjoy all the lovely stuff coming forward here uh, from both ends of things, from the multiplayer side of things, from the uh, from the single player as well. Some awesome stuff. When I wasn't getting trash canned in my game for the for the Dowie, <laughs> I actually really enjoyed like using Thoric. Thoric was really fun. Thoric is a really fun lord. He really is. Temple of of Temple of Luminarch. What's the ROR one called? I can never remember. All right, I'll pick Empire, Band Dwarfs, and Warriors of Chaos by the looks. Okay, interesting. Dwarfs is a good ban. Um, can't help but think they struggle against Wood Elves. Uh, what else would they struggle against? Vampire Counts. Uh, but obviously, I think Arsan knows Dilatron is an Empire and also a Warriors of Chaos main. So banning those two is, is also quite important. So Lizardmen, this is an interesting one. Lizardmen have lots of updates here, but I still think it's going to be slightly Empire favoured. Um, so it could be quite an interesting one. So something you're going to be expecting here from Ardzan. You're expe certainly expecting like lots of state infantry in the front. Templar is the ROR. Ah, oh, thank you, Butcher Bird. Thank you. How are you, Lodger, by the way? I am really awesome. Thank you very much, dude, for asking. I am really good. Really good. Very happy. Very happy. Luminarch of Hish is the normal. See, that... Templar of Luminarch just seems a little bit more basic than the Luminarch of Hish, you know? 
it sounds like the Luminarch of Hesh is like a special Luminarch, you know. But, um, yeah. Not very good, Mr. Blackthorn. Thank you very much. Very good. I'm nice to see you playing again. I, I think I saw... Were you playing on Ducky Stream, maybe? I saw you playing there. I saw you playing recently. I was like, ooh. I'll have to watch. I'll have to watch. I always like seeing one of the Don't God play. Uh, yes, yeah, so I also haven't got back to you yet on the uh, on the thing I messaged you about. So I haven't got back to you about that yet. But I will get back to you about that. I will get back to you about that. Let's hope this one is legal. I will check. I will check, which means I will need to put up what's going to be a nice display picture for all you guys to look at. We could look at the Rune Lord on an anvil. What a lovely picture. What a lovely picture. Right, let's pop in here. Let's check out these. Um, let me drop check. One, two, three. Three. Yep, that's legal. Oh, very interesting. Very interesting. Ooh. I found the Torox campaign to be a rolling conquest once three armies were available. Yeah, I've heard that you can really roll through it, is what I've heard. Luminarch is fun. Luminarch is super fun. <laughs> Shoot them down. Fire, reload, fire. <laughs> I just had those... Uh there's little state troops just reloading as much as possible. So let me ask you this, guys. I'm very interested in all of your opinions. What matchups are you enjoying more, or at least you're seeing more of now that you didn't see before? What are those specific matchups that you've seen that you didn't see in the previous patch? Is there any that you've seen more of that you quite like? This is a build. Huh. It's a build. Anything involving Dark Elves? Well, of course, for you, Mr. Cypher, of course. All right, let's get it going. So... Oh, it's got the wrong map. Ah, that was my bad. Okay, we'll play on the same map again. That's how it's going to go. Um, Beastman vs. Counts, but I hate that one. <laughs> yeah, I think that's quite a fun one. Uh, now that Poison nerf, let them skirmish. TK Woodhouse is a nice one. I think we saw it a little bit in before, but I th still think it's a nice matchup. Uh, I've got the wrong map, but uh, we will play this one again instead of, uh, yeah, we'll play it again because, well, well, we'll look at the Empire Force and you'll understand why. So we're going to have five units of great swords with the triple gold chevrons. Um, it's a build, and you're also going to have the flagellants as well. In the sky here, we are going to be having the Jade Wizard here on a Pegasus. We'll be having the Power Stone, Shield of Thorns, Earth Blood, and Life Bloom. And we're also going to be having an Amber Wizard here. Who's going to be having the Power Stone, the Curse of Anera, as well as the Parent's Impenetrable Pelt, also uh, Wild Form and Wild Heart. And then we'll be having Carla Franz, who will be having the Oracling Runefang, the Gamaraz, Stand Your Ground, Hold the Line, and obviously Blood Roar on both. So this is what we call a build. This is a build for sure. Um, yeah, so here for the Knights of Lizard Men, we are going to have the ROR Red Crested Skinks here. These boys looking so cool with their unbreakable status as well as their frenzy and their refuse to die. We're also going to be having a Bastelodon Solar Engine. So Gary here with a massive cannon on his back. He's going to be having that gem there that uh, shoots forward and uh, certainly does some big fire 
and also magic damage also coming in there with blinded for that negative melee attack melee defense and also the negative accuracy good anti-infantry armor piercing as well in melee combat with a massive 140 armor that bad boy is no joke we're going to be having lots of source warriors for shields lots of these bad boys at least five of them and also the brand new Troglodon. We're going to have the Skink Oracle, who's going to have the Opal Amulet, Earthblood, Flock of Doom, Fireball, Cold Blooded, and that amazing Missile Strength. We're also going to be having a normal Feral Gary here in the front line, coming through with this nice big, um, nice big back bull tail. And we'll be having a couple of units of the Chameleon Skink Skirmishers. We'll be have some Skink Cohorts in the front, alongside Uxosso, who's going to come in with his lovely abilities here. You will be having the Master Predator coming in with the Sniper Unspottable and also the Cold Blooded. And at the moment, as you can see, he is going to be unspottable. We're going to get some poke in here for sure. We're going to be fighting up against the Troglodon. And both of them are going to be going in here for the Snipe. They are going to have that Blood Roar as well for the negative 8 leadership here. And these boys are going to fight. It's like probably going to be, yep, yeah, right in the Roof Fang as well as Stanjigan. Gambaraz going in as well. Going to be trying to snipe here up against the Skink Oracle. Get rid of those Winter Mana nice and early. Big snipe here coming in from Jabers as well. Big hits going down. Going to be fighting up against the double sword with right their nice new symbols here, as you can see. Fantastic. Big hits going down here on this monster. It's going to be down to half health already for the Skink Oracle. But still it on shot. Looking like it's trying to hit the front line of the very elite great swords. And as you can see here, look, the Skink Oracle is getting absolutely hammered here. Shield of Thorns going down, Power Stone as well as they're fighting here in the pocket. Certainly we're getting Earth Bloods in as well. We are going to be getting shots here coming in from the Skink Skirmishers. But still it on shots are going to be trying to hit the front line up against the Great Swords. But it looks like here the Skink Oracle might just be able to get away. Soros Warriors are so difficult to push out of the way. It's like pushing through Dowie. They're just so goddamn heavy. So it looks like we are going to turn and burn here on Carla Franz. Big shot going into him. Big hits going down there on Carla Franz. Earth Bud. Pan's impenetrable pelt for the melee defense and also the physical resistance. He might even break here. God damn. Is that going to be, yeah, damaged by artillery. So he counts as artillery, which is quite interesting. We are going to have some rock drops going down here on the Great Horse. Some fantastic rock drops there from the double skinks. Double, uh, sorry, Terran Riders with skinks on top. Let's here we have lost the Jade Wizard. I think it's been terrified here. No, it's just going to break. Very interesting. That just straight up animation is also quite, uh, quite janky there as well. It looks like here we are going to have an overcasted Earthblood coming down from the Skink Oracle itself. Bit of a risk there as well. Carla Franz is going to come in. It's like Wild Form with the armor, base weapon damage, and arm piercing to fight up against the Skink Oracle. Do we have anything else here? Pan's Impenetrable Pelt could be very handy, but he has to snipe out the Skink Oracle. This is a must do, otherwise, it's just going to shoot and kill Carla Franz. Earthblood on himself as well. Looks like both have break and sniping coming in here for the Amber Wizard as well. Can they kill it though, is the question. I don't know if the Amber Wizard has enough stats. He's going to have, I think, 40 melee attack, 30 melee defense. So we have the Terran Riders pinning in as well. We have broken the Skink Oracle. We're also going to have the Stellar Solar Engine coming in to get some of that AP in there as well. Carla Franz is certainly going to be struggling here. This is going to be super close. As you can see, the Triple Gold Chevron Greatsword should be able to do some good work up against the Source Warriors. But here, going to be pinned in is going to be the Amber Wizard. We have managed to get the healing back here from the Jade Wizard. Jade Wizard looks like he is going to be chasing here the Teldron Riders. Can we heal? Carla France has come back. So can we heal Carla France is the question. We need to get all three of these bad boys together and heal them up as quickly as possible. You need to come over and see if you can save the Amber Wizard. 90 speed for itself. And the Teldron Riders are certainly going to chase. Big shots coming down there. That is going to be him done. Big hits from the Skink Oracle. Really nice. Big hit there in the backside of Carla France. That is going to be balance of power. And that is going to be the game. Oh, yeah, of course, we're going to have the uh, the Unbreakable uh, for Genens in there. I think there's one model left. How's the heat logic? The heat is uh, certainly taking its toll today, buddy. It's certainly taking its toll for me. <laughs> but uh, it's all good. How are you, Sergeant Spaghetti? I hope you're doing well. Thanks for making this up, Logic. Great idea. No problem, Dan Under Blunder. I really hope you've enjoyed it, buddy. I really do. I really do. How is that legal? Uh, you can take uh, five great swords. It's totally legal to take this. You can take five great swords. They only cost 900 each. Uh, I believe it's anything over 950. You can only take four. I believe. How you doing, Jeremy? 
Hope you're doing well. Yeah, GG's indeed. GG's indeed. GG's well played. This was an awesome build from Arthur Sander. He is a man that comes through with the full memes. But 2,000 damage value for Carla Franz. 600 here for the Amber Wizard. With 170 for the Jade Wizard. 840, 700, 500, 530, and 246 here for the Great Swords. With 365 for the Flagellants. Yeah, very good build indeed. I think maybe it'd be a little bit cheaper. Maybe going with the Tatter Sauce might have been a bit nicer, but uh, maybe it's a small upgrade there. 1,300 here from Exotel. 3,100 damage for the Skink Oracle. Now, these two are probably the most powerful thing here to come out of the Lizardman DLCs. They are very good indeed. I've seen, actually, Exotel get uh, 3,800 damage value in a single game. Uh, and he didn't even use all of his ammunition. He is super strong at the moment. He's just super strong. 400, 1,200, 870, and 460 here for the Source Warrior Shields. And so 700 here for the Red Crested Skinks. 420 here and 130 for the Skink Cohorts. Uh, 600 for the Skink Skirmishers. 550 from the Skink Skirmishers with 750. And 740 for the Pterodon Riders. 130, sorry, 173 here from the Feral Bastilodon. And 900 for the Bastilodon Solar Engine. I didn't update the score, that's my bad, but a good 2 I win here for Dilatron, and incoming here should be... Let's get a little look going on here. Uh, who have we got coming in? So, oh, Cowboy Bob, of course. Yes, Cowboy Bob won 2 in the beginning. But lovely stuff from Arthur Zan. He came, he come through with some uh, very, very interesting builds that can really throw people off. All his own builds, and it's all pretty fun stuff. All right, so we're going to go through to the final, which will be a best of three here. Uh, so it should be pretty fun, uh, nonetheless. I can ask the guys if they want to do a best of five, but uh, we'll see what they want to do. What would you guys prefer? Would you prefer a best of three or a best of five? So we are going to be starting off with Outdoor Outskirts, I believe. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Hope you win since you bested me. <laughs> I think Artisan played very well. Yeah, like, um, Skink Oracles are so expensive. They're like two... That probably was about 2.5 to 2.7k. So the fact it got 3.1, that's what it needs to get every single time. It's what it needs to get. Vote for five. Okay. <laughs> just, just, just double check they got enough time. So yeah, it looks like people want a best of five. Yeah, we can do a best of five. If people want a best of five, I'll add on two maps and we'll certainly get that going. Um... I don't mind book and pick. I was like, did a trauma to do a best of five, and let's do it. Fantastic. Did to start us off? What was the theme on this tourney? I missed the beginning. No problem, Jeremy. So this is the brand new short bid tournament. So this is for newer players here in the Total War uh, community for the multiplayer scene. You can join in and you can play up against people that are newer as well to try and get yourself a bit more experience in the tournament. Now, what will happen here after the tournament is complete, it will go into the short beard league, which is where you'll be put into leagues here, depending on your current skill level where you finish in the tournament. And what you'll do is you'll play people of your ability levels 
uh, over a season, which might last, say, maybe uh, a week or two. And then you'll have the chance to go up and down in promotion. So if you come top, you'll likely get promoted. If you get to the bottom, you'll go down a little bit. But it's not a problem if you go down. You'll still be playing people with your ability levels. And, you know, if you go, you could have the option to go back up again. But if you're in the top league and you win, what actually happens is, is you actually leave the tournament. You actually leave the short beard league because you're, you know, you've won. So you're essentially you've become the best in that um, in that season, and you now can progress into the bigger tournaments. And at the end of every season, there is going to be a special tier called the Nor Grimlings, which is going to be called the Nor Grimlings Short Beard Tournament, and that is where anybody anybody can participate. They don't actually have to be just part of the short bid tournament, but anybody in the short bid tournament can play, and anybody outside as well. So it's just going to be an extra tournament there for everyone to play, and the tournament will be like this as well. So, so if you'd like to play or would like to get involved, Jeremy, uh, this would be the perfect time. Uh, there's going to be four different tiers where I'll go from the down, uh, go from the top downwards here from this one. And if you want to start a new, you'll just have to come in at the bottom and just uh, see how it goes. You know, see if you can get some good games in there, play some, play some good people. And the way it will go is I'll do like a highlights reel of every single week when you guys send me in the replays. So you'll go into the Discord, you'll have your own section. When you play, you'll say uh, be a best of three against... Uh, you play everybody once in a best of three. And then let's say you win 2-1, you gain two points and your opponent gains one point. And then what you'll do is you'll send in those replays. I'll uh, go through all of them, take snippets out of uh, the games and be like, oh, these were the game-changing moments, etc. And uh, then go through like uh, you know, this week, uh, Logic beat Ducky 2-1. And uh, these were the bits and bobs, these were the armies and what happened. And this were the, 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 key, the key parts of the map or the matchup. Yeah, no problem, buddy. No problem at all. How is Greenskins versus Beastmen even? Um, chariots. <laughs> Yeah, you crack on, Hank. You, 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 um, you can more than, more than, uh, comfortably send them into the Discord there. Hello, Mr. Bobo. How are we? How are we? Fantastic, Reptilicus. I would, uh, very happily have you here in the, uh, in, in the scene. I would say Beastman was always greenskin favoured. Uh, I would just now say that now it's a lot more even. Oh, we did. Thank you very much, my liege. Thank you very much. I will check that video out, sir. I'm very excited for it. So what we'll do here is we'll change the maps here for the best of five. Uh, so let's crack on. So we're going to be, we'll then have to throw in just a few more. Map four here, and then we'll do map five. And we'll do Perfect, so all of the maps are up now, so you guys can uh, head on in there and see. I actually realized I don't think I've given you the right, uh, when I, let me just yeah, go here. I actually don't believe I gave you the correct link to find this place. <laughs> you guys actually can't see the maps, I believe. I believe I've made that mistake. So let me pop through here and see what we can find. So if we edit here. Oh, yes, I put battle menu on here for some reason. There we go. So there is the short bid. So if you go down into the description, you should be able to find the short bid with the link so you can find out what's happened today. Enter the bone zone. Yes, sir, Mr. Hank. Yes, sir. The bone zone is a place where many men... Yeah, let's not say that. Let's not say that. <clears throat> I would ban Dowie uh, as Greenskins as Brett. I would ban Dowie and Greenskins as Brett. Are those the same for you guys? Um, I would certainly ban Dowie. I'd probably ban Lizardmen as Bretonia. 
Hello, Rubain. How are you, sir? How are you doing? How's things going? Hope you're doing well, buddy. So for those guys that don't know who Rubain is, Rubain is an awesome guy here from DBD who uh, comes through and does all sorts of uh, excellent content here on Twitch. So uh, please go make sure you get onto Twitch, you type him in, it should be, I believe it's Rebain Fantasy, if I'm correct. So you should be able to pop on there and find him with all of his awesome, awesome content. So please go check him out. Uh, probably good you cut that joke off. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit, eh? Maybe just a little bit. Bring in the moves. So, let's have a look here and see what Cowboy Bob did. So, yeah, it looks like here. My pit first, so more chance for me to play my me. Yeah. I'll start us off. Uh, Greenskins ban vampire counts and uh, beastmen. Yeah. Two fine two fine bands there. I shall go to Bretonia. Okay. Um, yeah. Should be interesting. Not sure if it's bad much. I haven't played it in a while. 50 50. Yeah, um, certainly more 50 50 now. Certainly more 50 50 now. Outdoor outskirts could be interesting. It could be interesting. Yes, Rebane did have the first one, yes. All right, let's hop on into this. Hey, Papa Palpatine, I've just seen you there. How you doing, buddy? Hope you're doing well. I would ban Coast instead of Greenskins. Um, which one's this for? Oh, is that for uh, Bretonia? I kind of like banning Lizardmen. I don't like Bretonia into Lizardmen. It, it can be done. It can be done. But it is quite a tough one. But I can see why you would ban Vampires as well. Lots of uh, good cheap armor piercing. Anti-large stuff as well. Pretty cheap there. Papa Palpatine. Actually, Mr. Palpatine, I have to send you a message, buddy. I have to get in contact with you. So check your DMs shortly. I will be messaging you soon. All right, so for the greenies, let's get in, let's get involved. So we are gonna be having the Arachnorok Spider. So fantastic spider here, causing that terror, as well as Strider. Good poison all round and good anti-large armor piercing stats. We are gonna have the Goblin Forest Spider Rider Archers. So we're gonna have one, two units of those, as well as some Goblin Fire uh, Forest Spider Riders. We have two of those as well. We are gonna have the Arachnorok with the very nice Goblin Great Shaman on top. So he is going to be having Don't Even Try It, Arcane Conduit, Itchy Nuisance, Vindictive Glare, and also, uh, is that um, Sneaky Stealing? I believe it is, yes. We are going to have some Orc Biggins here in the middle, uh, some Orc Boys as well. More Orc Boys, uh, Night Goblins, uh, Orc Boys. Oh, looks like we're actually going to be having the Hammer of Gork as well. The Hammer of Gork is armor piercing. This bad boy also comes in with Blinded. It's going to be the same ability there as uh, some of the other range as well. So, lots of Orp Boys, lots of Orp Boy Biggins, I believe. Yep, Orp Boy, Orp Biggins. And some Spider Riders. So, for the Bretonians, for the front line here, we are going to be having some Peasant Mobs, we're mixing in with some Paddle Pilgrims. And we're also going to be having some Knights of the Realm here in the front. It's like one, two, ooh, so two units of the Knights of the Realm, also with the Companions of Quinell. So, Companions of Quinell, the... Um, the gravity defying book holders, as I like to call them. Uh, they are going to come in here with the anti large armor piercing, that fire resistance, physical resistance, and immune to psychology. Very good indeed overall. We're also going to be having some spearmen arms on the flanks, some more uh, anti infantry knights of the realms here on either side, and lots of spears and lots of men at arm shields. In the back, we are going to have some peasant pox arrows. Looks like at least three units of those. So, yeah, pretty good builds on both sides. Pretty good builds on both sides indeed. Uh, the uh, Orc Boys here and the Night Goblins with the uh, Orc Biggins should do uh, pretty well indeed at dealing with this infantry. Uh, there's not too much anti-large here to deal with cavalry. But there is some. There is some. So the Forest Goblin Spider Riders are in the front and it looks like we only have three of them. So dealing with Skirmish Cavalry in general could be difficult. 
I like green skins in the red because... <laughs> I love it, I love it. Bringing that foot of gork, right? So it's only going to be blobbing up here in the trees a little bit. We are going to have the Fae with the double paladin here. Uh, one paladin is going to be having um, Guardian. Whilst it looks like the Fae Enchantress here is going to be a little bit still. It's going to have the toilets below. Earthblood, Arcane Conduit, and Life Bloom. Shots going in here up against the peasant mobs. So they're going to try and deal with these uh, very lightly armoured infantry. Uh, not too much leadership from them. They are going to be having 28 there. They haven't lost too much health, but they certainly lost some to being damaged, I'm sure. Shots are going to be piling in here to the heavily armoured Knights of the uh, Knights Errand. They have 80 armour, and with those bronze shields, meaning some of the arrows here from the Forest Goblin Spider Riders not going to really do too much damage. They're probably going to get more value here from shooting into other targets. We can see what they're trying to do. They're trying to poison these boys, trying to slow them down a little bit, and looks like some of the force here is uh, trying to do its absolute best. Kiting is going to be coming from the Forest Goblin Spider Riders, as they are trying to do as much damage as they possibly can up to the frontline units until they hit the front. Yes, for the Gork indeed. For the Gork is an awesome and a lovely spell. I do love it. Because the army here is coming forward from the Bretonians, so they're going to be getting ready here to hit the greeny boys of Dilatron. Cowboy's got a pretty nice build here. He has all of the tools to break it down. You can certainly wither down some of that vigor here using the peasant mobs. Uh, certainly throwing them in here up against the Orc Biggins. That would be very good indeed. Just really wither them down and just make sure that they're hitting nice and slowly. Naked to leaderships and the rest. It looks like here... Oh, they need stabbing going down. Both of the Ragnarok's going to come in. The Chi is going to be on her own though. So it looks like the Fate is going to get away. She has 95 speed there as well. So that's uh, very nice. Uh, lots of damage going down on top of her as well. Just like there. She took quite a chunk of damage. And it looks like here for the Orc boys, there is going to be a Dwellers below only on one unit. I probably would wait for a little bit more surround for, before using Dwellers below. That's quite expensive on the Winds of Magic. But shots are now going to be piling into the Goblin Great Shaman. We are going to have the Double Paladins as well as Fae here fighting up against him. Certainly needs some support here from the second Arachnorot Spider as well as the Goblin Big Boss. But it looks like here, unfortunately... I think he's going to get away with it, but it's not the Goblin Big Boss. Has been slapped here by the Fae Enchantress. 92 speed here. For, oh no, 78 as he is on his spider. He is going to get caught in here for Knights of the Realm. Itchy Nuisance going down for the negative 24 mana attack and base weapon damage. But it's like here, Rear Charger coming in the side up against the Orc Boys as well. So we are going to have some anti large Spearmen trying to help in that enframement as well. Coming forward though, we are going to get the Orc Boys in. Some pretty good stats overall. Looks like we are going to be losing the nice uh, Goblin Big Boss. But here, lots of damage has gone down on the Great Goblin Shaman for on top of the Arachnorok Spider. The second one is going to be holding. Uh, but, uh, ooh, a lovely Fnatic is coming through the horses here. Good armor piercing. It's starting to do some very good damage up against the Knights. Love the Arachnorok Spider coming in with some big attacks here on the large cavalry. And uh, it looks like the Fae is going to be getting slapped here by some of the boys here with the shields and the maces. They're going to just be punching through her here. Wah is going to go off for that immune to psychology. Plus 24 melee attack as well as the armor piercing and also base weapon damage. Goblin Great Shaman has been surrounded by these knights. It is going to be down to 8 leadership. 11 leadership now starting to stabilize a little bit. War has gone off. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, it looks like here we are going to be going down. Shots are going to get into the questing knights. Oh, you panicked me. I, I thought I put my screen blocker up. I was like, no! No, there's way I casted all this with the screen blocker up. <laughs> uh, so the Ratnarok is going to be fighting here up against the Knights of the Realm. My heart, my heart. <laughs> but there's going to be so much fighting in here now. Uh, looks like the Night Goblins have gone down low enough now that there's going to be no more Fanatics here. Massive cavalry charges coming into the pocket. Balance of power is going to be even here, but we have a lot of healing potential here from the Bretonians. Now they're going to be fighting up against the Goblin Big Boss. We are going to have an Earthblood going down. That should be, uh, shift the balance of power here into the favour of the Bretonians and Cowboy. What are you saying, Mr. Four Poland? How you doing, buddy? So, big hits coming down. Um, fighting up against infantry here, they really need to deal with this hero and Lord Corps and some of the knights. They can't really be get caught getting fighting up against infantry. Uh, the Orc Biggins, uh, they're going to be now up to only 10 kills, that's quite surprising. Uh, Forest Goblin Spider Riders, perfect here, they're going to pin in, and now Dilatron's going to be coming in with those spiders. Spiders are going to come in to try and do some good anti-large damage here up against the Knights Errand, up against the Goblin Great Shaman as well. Also has some very, very nice spells and abilities here. Itchy Nuisance could go down, that could really be very helpful here. The Itchy Nuisance has gone down for that negative 24 mile attack, 30% base weapon damage. 
But it uh, looks like you're not going to get too much value for those trades. Banners of Hat is going to be heavily now in the Bretonian favour. We are going to be breaking with the Goblin Great Shaman. We have lost the second Arachnorot Spider. And it looks like here we do have the Spider Riders in the back trying to shut down the Peasant Mobs. But uh, they're certainly going to be... Uh, not shutting them down as effective as they could be. Probably want to try and see if we get some Orc Biggins onto the second unit. Orc Biggins needed to be in here fighting. You needed to use your Orc Boys to get around the flanks and shut down these uh, Peasant Pox Arrows. But a lovely game nonetheless here from both sides. Excellent win coming in from the big boy Cowboy Bob. And let's get it changed. <sighs> Mark Clark, what are you doing to me, bro? You panicked me. God damn. <laughs> God damn, man. You, um... God, you threw me through a loop. You threw me one. All right. Um, so it's going to be the big fat Dubsky here coming in from Cowboy. Cowboy. Sweet. So Cowboy there is going to be 1-0 up against Dilatron. Big Dubski from him as well, seeing the Bretonians beating the Greenskins. But it's like here we are going to have 980 here for the Fae, 200 and 200 here for the Paladins. Uh, Frontline, uh, the uh, Sweaty Boys, they, they did okay. We had 111 and 441 for the Battle Pilgrims, with 100 here for the Spearman Arms, uh, as well as 267 here for the Men at Arms, and the Spearman Arms here getting 140. 1,100 for the Companions of Quinell. Very healthy. You can see just how strong Companions of Quinell are. 20% physical resistance. That fire resistance as well is very nice. But 1,100 damage value. And look how much health it's got. Certainly going to get some more slap in there for sure. 630 here from the Questing Knights. And sorry for the Anti-Large Knights of the Realm. 730, 590 here. And for the Knights Errands, 300 and also 700 here. Uh, 544, 727, and 444 from the uh, from the Peasant Bowman Pox Arrows. So I really liked the Double Big Spider idea here. 1,051 for the Goblin Great Shaman. 404 here from the Goblin Big Boss. And 855 from the Arachnorog Spider. I think you need a little bit more support here from the Orc Biggins. They could really have been nice to stick around the spiders. Because the problem is the spiders are fighting on their own. They're going to be taking every single punch here coming from the anti-large cavalry. Especially from the uh, companions of Quinell. Anti-large armor piercing. They certainly did some big damage there in the pocket. A little bit more infantry support and just, you know, separating um, the cavalry here with the anti-large and the uh, single entity spiders. But uh, looks like here, 300, 665, 300, and 200 here for the Orc boys. Very good indeed. 987 from the 8 Pete Loonies. So nearly 1,000 damage showing that's still very strong. 500 and 480 for the Orc Biggins. 143 and 300 here from the Forest Goblin Spider Riders. And from the Archers, 200, 190, and 396. So those three doing okay. I think what might have been quite nice is to see the ROR Goblin Warfighter Archers. Good armor pacing from them, 92 speed, immune to psychology. Very good indeed in general. With, uh, looks like, 870 here from the Hammer of the Gork. But yeah, very nice builds in general. GG's well played. What's the next map? Yeah, the next map should be... I can't remember now. Troll Country. Lovely. Map is set. Some, trolls, some stone trolls would have been nice. Yeah, indeed. Big arm and piercing as well, especially when you pop arm with wire, etc. That would have been very nice. How are we doing, Jason Thompson? Nice to see you back, buddy. Stone trolls or black orcs, yeah. I think black orcs are nice. They're a little bit slow, I think. Uh, but I do like black orcs. Black orcs, good AP, good armor themselves. Very uh, very good at just, just holding there. Uh, but yeah, I think both of those, I think maybe one or two of those could have been quite nice. The regeneration from the stone trolls is quite good as well with that fear. They also have a massive uh, armor piercing weapon strength. So both of them very good. Not enough crumping. I, I agree. Not enough crumping. Cowboy is in fact a Bretonian main. I did not know that. Thank you very much for telling me, Papa Optin. I didn't know that. Um... Yeah, 
Yeah, Satsuma is a very good green skin player indeed. Very good green skin player. <laughs> no, Big Boss, you are my favourite degenerate. <laughs> I think it was always slightly green skin favor before, but I would say now not. And also, I bring Snarsnick in this matchup. I really like Snarsnick. Um, I bring Snarsnick because he's, he's cheap, he's anti-large, he comes with some really good spells, also can really force the engagement with the uh, fermented fungi. I can, like, uh, I'm sure Papa Palpatine will tell you. <laughs> Papa Palpatine had an absolute mission up against me. I, I kind of got really lucky, actually. Um, we played green skins into Bretonia for the WWC. And um, our fermented fungi, um, his lords and heroes, um, and I can't remember what map it was on. I can't remember what map it was on, but um, basically, Snarsnick has like 55 mana defense, which is not massive, but it's not weak either. And he was kind of stuck behind a tree, so the green knight kept trying to hit, but kept getting, um, kept, kept like kind of missing because of the tree. And I basically just stabbed the fate to death, and I just kept rampaging her into my like um, anti large. Um, Biggins, the uh, Savage Orc Biggins, uh, the anti-large bonus was large as well. I just, just pushed her into those and just dealt with her that way and then just skirmished out his cav, which, uh, and then he came back and just crumped me with Beastmen and Chaos, but it was super fun. It was super fun. Blorks are very strong here. Trolls, I don't know. I've never seen, I've never liked them here, but I've seen them work. Um... I always prefer going a little, like, I think Snarsnick is the perfect cheat lord, is good with good anti-large as well, uh, I think is, uh, it's just very nice. You, know, you have someone, someone to support him, like the, uh, the, black, uh, the Bob, the Black Hawk Big Boss, uh, you can be someone like him that brings the plus 10 leadership as well around him, that immune to the psychology with the rabble rouse, so that fear doesn't affect you as well from the Fae and, and things like that. And you can just really sit in and, you know, you give Snarsnake some good melee attack, him some good melee attack, Rabble Rouse uh, has increased leadership as well surrounding you. And then that, uh, alongside War, can really deal with their front line. You have very good tools to deal with their uh, large as well, you know. Isn't this matchup good for dinos? Uh, this is pretty even, I would say. On this map, though, it's an interesting one. It's quite a small map. Uh, you could definitely see a bone giant in this matchup, for sure. Maybe even two. Uh, or lots of Yushapti, great bows. Uh, you could see, like, maybe the ROR and two other Yushapti. Uh, Tomb Guard, Halberds can do quite nicely. Uh, Tomb Guard as well. Uh, cheap skeleton front line. Maybe with someone like Arkan with Spirit Leech, Spam, and uh, Lieber. Uh, Liebe. It's not Lieber uh, Bubonicus, it's um, Lieber Mortis. 44% physical resistance, 8 leadership, very nice. Very nice here. Yeah, yeah, on Troll Conch, I'd say it's Ellen favoured as well, just because it's so short. The map is quite small. Chameleon Stalkers can clear TK. Bat lines. Yeah, they're very good. 75 um, armor piercing missile strength is very good. Especially as explosion and fire damage. Also, you can bring a fire caster here in this matchup. So you can bring like a slant of fire. But just fire head goes bruh. Charm Skinks. Seem pretty nice in this matchup. Yeah, I think they have their place. I think they do. I think they do. I think Charm Stalkers do really well in this matchup, actually, as well. Oh, we can see some Sallies. I'm off to see some some of those uh, Sally Salamanders. Well, I have to get the hard loose. Listen, we all know that Lizard Men were just jealous of what the Dowie have. They just wanted their own blasting charges. So, you know, they brought in the Chameleon Stalkers. And it's okay, you know. Everyone wants to be the Dowie, and it's okay. They're allowed to have some blasting charges. 
But obviously they had to make them better with their 360 degree shooting and they can fire whilst moving. Seems perfectly acceptable. Still haven't got the hand loose with the blast and charge throws. Uh, blast and charges will kind of work the same as like blast and charges for Darwin. Um, umbral tide, yes, the umbral tide. Uh, I love this. Umbral, umbral tide are so cool. They're like black, orange, and red design. They just look gorgeous. But um, it's the same as like blasting charges, black four, and sort of like you know, if you just let them stand there and let the units approach them, they'll slow fire. But if you actually click on something, they'll they'll prepare blast and charges ready to go. Right, so you'll you'll get that better. You could sort of click, let the first wave go off, drop a little bit, and then come back and click again. So you sort of like have this back and forth, you know. Your shop team can yeah, your shop team can do well here. So let's have a look here. Ooh. Oh, now you are talking to me, Zedatron. Zedatron, you have hit my sweet spot. You have brought the Sphinx of the Yusef. Probably one of my favorite units here for the Tomb Kings. Coming in with that fire resistance, fire damage, magic damage, anti-large armor piercing. This thing is just so goddamn gorgeous. Look at it. It is such a cool design. So cool. We're also going to have the Kitty Cat here for Cetra. He's going to have the anti-infantry armor piercing, good armor, and he will be coming with the Blessed Parade of Petra, as well as the Wrath of Petra, Incantation of Protection, yielding, Unyielding Will, as well as the Restless Dead. Unyielding Will, plus 5 melee attack, melee defense in a 55 meter radius. Very good indeed. We'll also be having the Tomb Guard Halberds, uh, Skeleton Warriors in the back here, some more Skeleton Warriors, Skeleton Spears, the Kepler Guard, very good for that regeneration and magic damage, Skeleton Spears and Skeleton Warriors. In the front here, we are going to be having the Eyes of the Desert. So the Skeptral Stalkers, these guys have 186 armor-piercing poison missiles in that 80-meter 80, uh, 80 radius. And they're going to have some magic ammunition. Not much ammunition, but uh, the general stuff is going to be uh, with the Halberds, the anti-large armor-piercing here from both sides. So, uh, yeah, so there's going to be one unit. I thought we saw two units of snakes, but it looks like not. But we are also going to have two Ushopti Great Bows. This is a build. This is a build. So... From the boys here, from the lizards, we are going to have some skin cohort javelins, as well as some Saurus warriors in the front. Looks like one, two, three units of Saurus warriors. Made that four, and made that two here for the skin cohort javelins. We are going to have the ROR cohort of Sotek, Unbreakable, Frenzy, and Refuse to Die, as well as the skin cohorts in the back. And this guy here, we are going to have the triple pterodons in the sky for those rock drops. And we'll also be having the stegodon from Bob, coming with a flaming sword of rune, giving that a beautiful fire damage there, and magic. 394 armor-piercing poison missile strength. We'll also be having the Slan Mage Priest of Fire and also all the double Stegodon. So nice Flaming Sword of Rune coming down there. Now the base weapon damage is actually not going to affect its range. It's only going to affect its melee stance. But maybe the Imbued Fire is here what you're going for. And also here they're going to be shooting into the Ashopti. Doing some uh, pretty nice work there. Uh, not too bad in general. Still going to be having nine models and the Ashopti are going to be shooting back. Could be interesting to see how this goes. The rest of the front line is going to go forward, but there's not going to be much support here. Slime Mage Priest is going to be having a Burning Head as well. Uh, oh, we can do it here, can't we? Yeah. So it looks like we're going to be having the Banishment, Shield of the Old Ones, Armor of Quetzel, as well as the Blood Statue of Spite, Burning Head, Cold Blooded, Greater Arcane Conduit, and Strider, because, you know, Slants need Strider. So, fighting here in the pocket, we are going to be having Taurus Warriors here going after the Skeleton Spears. Fighting in the front line here is going to be Citra the Imperishable. Just going to be chewing apart this infantry here. Very good stuff. I love the animations here coming in from these big beastie boys. They're just going to be chewing through. I love this shing coming through there as they do carve through those nice Saurus warriors. Coming over the top though is going to be the Terran Warriors. They're going to get absolutely slapped here by the Ushopti if you're not careful. And it looks like some rock drops is going to come down on the Skeleton Spears. Uh, some good damage there, really going to help punch through with the Source Warriors. Now they can get in the back here and do some good work in the back. Maybe try and see if you can get some block drops. Oh, a little bit of a miss micromanagement there. All those bombs are going to miss and they are very costly here. They're going to be very good up against the lightly armoured boys. Shots are going to be going down here on top of the shot. The Great Bows, six models left there. And looks like here we're going to be shooting with them as well. Shots have come in the sky from the shot, the Great Bows. But being that they're not going to be shooting the big dinos, and being that they're going to be shooting here up against the Terran Riders, means they're going to keep shooting in this pocket and getting that value. So what's warranted here are going to be punching through on the front lines. They don't have too much support. Uh, really could do with getting the uh, cohort of Sotic in, and you can really do with getting the rest of your source Warriors. Burning Head is going to come through though. What are we going to see from this Burning Head? Burning Head. Gonna miss the skellies. 
are we going to hit? So we are going to hit through these as well. You're not going to get so much damage here on the Skeleton Warriors. Uh, it's okay. I think a burning head here in the back might have been a little bit better on the units that aren't moving here too much and are very much in the line. You could have started it here and gone across. But here, as we can see in the back, we're going to be, this is very good here from uh, Dilatron. We're going to be rolling these two dirty together, and that's going to be very, very nice indeed. Now, it's like the shop that are going to be going down, negative 10 leadership, and they're certainly going to be dying over time. So here, what I would do is swap both of these boys onto the new targets of the u Shopty Great Bows, as they're certainly going to be going down very quickly. Negative 44 leadership there, so I wouldn't worry about them anymore. Now, they are going to be dealing with the infantry. A lot of this is going to be blobbed on top of itself. You definitely need to get the uh, skin kill horse in the back here. Try and see if you can shut down certain entities. We do actually have the Terror Riders back. Where are they going to be shooting into? Looks like they're going to be going. Incantation of Protection is going to be on the Kepra Guard. Very nice there to help them protect also with that regeneration to help them carve apart these Saurus Warriors. It looks like the Skeptral Stalkers here are going to be fighting up against the Slan. Slan coming in with that absolute butt slam here on top of these ROR big boys. They are anti large and armor piercing, so I'm not really too sure here what hit them quite so hard, but we do have the triple Terror Riders on top for sure. So we have a summon of the Yashopti as well to retry and an aid in a removal here of the Slam Mage Priest of Fire. So Burning Head did go down the back. It looks like it didn't hit too much, unfortunately. Looks like there's going to be a Banishment in here as well. Banishment was cancelled, though. Banishment was cancelled. Oh, Banishment is back online. Now, Banishment, it should come away from the caster. The caster is over here. Banishment, its first movement will be away from the caster. And then from there, it is random. So it looks like randomly it's going to be pushing here, unfortunately, into the Source Warrior Shields. It didn't go left here into the uh, Ushakti Great Bow. Coming in, though, for the Absolute Slam. Essentially Imperishable, the Kitty Cats coming in with those just leap and bound melee attacks. Coming in, terrifying all units in here. Look at these bad boys breaking absolutely everywhere. They're going to be coming in, and this is just a playground for them. But Banner's Power here is going to be in the Tomb King favor. They're going to be very nice here in the pocket. Slam could really do with assisting... Ah, that's how the eyes of the desert didn't go down. Uh, they are going to be 400. No, uh, sorry, 627 HP. Are they healing? I think they were healing. So ammunition is going to be running low here. Stegodons are now down. They're out of ammunition. And the Kitty Cats are going to be going strong. I think this should be a win for the Tomb Kings. Uh, looks like here the Sphinx of Yusef is going to be the one that is going to take apart the rest of the army. Maybe some more ammunition shots here into the Sphinx of Yusef might have been nice. Uh, we Do we have Fireball? We don't have Fireball. So Fireball, I mean, even then it has 25% fire resistance. So there's really not much to take care of it, unfortunately. It looks like the Shakti Great Bows are going to be just fighting up against Pterodons. I don't know if they're going to be able to take care of them. I just don't think they've got enough stats to do it. They do have some pretty good weapon strength, I believe. I believe it's 65 weapon strength. The stats are pretty poor on them, though. 26 and 22. I'm not sure what melee defense we're talking about here. 35 melee defense. They're not going to hit very much. Source Warriors are coming into the back, though. They can certainly do some good weapon strength here on those Shafty Great Bows. They have 29 melee attacks. They're not brilliant either, but still better than what we've got here for the Pterodons. And coming through here are going to be the Stegodons. These boys can still shoot over time. They still have those skinks on the top. They can do that good poison damage. You'll we'll be seeing these boys here on the top. They're going to be doing their damage here up against the uh, up against the nice Kitty Cats. Kitty Cats are going to charge in. Big headbutts here between these two. Fantastic with the Stegodon fighting up against Cetra the Imperishable. And now the Sphinx fighting up against the other one. It looks like Cetra is going to get the better of the engagements here. 31 on 33 with Cetra coming in with 40 and also 28. It looks like here Cetra is going to be punching pretty hard here. It looks like they... Uh, the nice blessed bra uh, blade of Petra is going to go down, given those negative stats. And it's like here we do actually manage to have the other Sagan on chasing after the Tomb Guard Halberds. We are actually going to be having the Skin Cohort Javans coming in as well. Do where is that Slam Mage? Slam Mage could come through with a Burning Head. Burning Head could be very good here on the Kepra Guard. They have base 20% negative to fire damage, and then also have 22% negative here when he does. Oh, doesn't looks like he doesn't have Kindle Flame, which is quite interesting. Very interesting stuff. Uh, these boys should be able to absolutely wreck the Stegodon. Balance power is relatively even. The big kitty cats here coming through doing the good damage. Yeah, we have some units here on the periphery. They are going to be coming back. So we have managed to get rid of the uh, Ushafti Great Bows. It's now going to be Cetra and also the big bad Sphinx of Yusef left. Everything now is piling on the Sphinx of Yusef and so it should do. 
Uh, try and see if we can get the cohort Sotek to pop off it shall not die. We still have 20 models in there, very low. We can manage to keep those going as long as possible, get that poison armor piercing in as well. Separated here slightly is going to be the Sphinx and also Citra. He's going to be fighting up against all of these units here as well. It's going to be going down to 3000 HP. Can we get the double Stegodons in for that cycle charge though? I don't know. We could really do with getting a nice, uh, a nice uh, flaming sword of ruin here. That could be very good for all the units that are involved. Imbue that fire damage as well and just kill off the Kepler Guard. Everything now is piling in. Rampaging here from the Saurus Warriors. I just I don't know if there's enough on this man. Shield of the old one's going down though. 20% negation there on all damage and plus 8 leadership can really help them fight here towards the later stages. Charge here on the Sphinx of Yusuf coming in from the Stegodon as well. Definitely want to get that Stegodon in, but he has broken. Do we have a cold blooded in the pocket though to pick him up? I'm not sure. But it looks like here we are going to get some good charging coming into the Stegodon. Stegodon is going to pull out, but some big damage going down on the Sphinx though. I didn't see that. But that's some big damage indeed. It's going to be down to 2000 HP. Is his leadership going to hold though? I do not know. It looks like here we could be losing the Kepler Guard. They are going to be uh, negative 14 leadership. So they, they are going to be regening, but they're also going to be getting damage over time. They are going to go down here pretty quickly. Big boy on big boy here. That's how the Stegodon does charge. It's going to get counter hit here by the Sphinx. 40% uh, physical resistance though is going to aid. That is possibly going to end proceedings here, I think, with him going down. Kitty Cat is online as well. He has gone down. He has died, unfortunately. Sphinx, and the Sphinx breaks. If it breaks, uh, we could see a dub ski here. We could. It is possible. Where is the slime, though? That's the question. The slime must stay healthy here. Ah, oh, no. The slime has been absolutely slammed here. The slime couldn't afford to go in there, I don't think. Oh, it looks like it is going to start to break. So negative 12, so it is going to start going down on leadership now. It's going up and down. It's roughly stabilizing. That is balance of power, though, unfortunately. Um, Slan there holding a lot of that balance of power, which means with those big kits coming in, he is going to go down. But a big dub ski here coming in for Dilatron. Nice game in general. That Sphinx was so close to dying. It was so close to dying. Yeah, indeed, Palpatine. But that's, of course, you know, that's what comes with the Shilby tournament. That's what comes with the practice, right? When they get that timing right, the Lizard Men there for sure could have got some, uh, for sure could have got some good working. But that was a super tight game. And that's really good. And that, that just shows here that the tournament's working really nicely in the final here. These two are very well partnered up against each other. And it was uh, quite the good fun game. Really, really fun game. 700 here from the Slime HP to Fire, with 2,100, 815 for the Stegodon. 830, 590, and 550 here from the Source Warrior Shields, with 1,041 for the Cohort of Sotek. So good, they are so good. Um, looks like we here 520 and 588 for the Source Warriors as well. So very good for the infantry in general. 720, 200, and 775 for the Pterodon Riders. Apologies. And it looks like here we've got 404, 320 as well from the Skin Cohort Javelins with 288 here from the Skin Cohort. I think if you're going to go Skin Cohort, if you can just about squeeze out some more Javelins, it's always worth it in my opinion. It is always worth it. Setri, 144 kills, 2,000 damage value for himself. Uh, front line, 300, 77, 240. And for the Spear Variety, 93 and 150. Tomb Guard Halberds coming in with 659. 1,500 here with 153 kills from the Kepra Guard Tomb Guard. Very nice indeed. 1,288 and 401 here from the Shakti Great Bow. That's what sort of damage you can expect from these bad boys here indeed. 1,380 from the Eyes of the Desert with 2,364 for the Sphinx of Yusef. Very good indeed. Very, very good stuff. So now here we move, we'll be moving on to Shimmer's Ward. I do like this map very much indeed. Shimmer's Ward is a very gorgeous map. But once your Yushati were in range, I thought needed to pressure. Fantastic though, fantastic. Yeah, GG's all round. Fantastic games here. Fantastic stuff. I 
thought if they managed to kill the Sphinx of Yusef, it might have been possible using the Shield of the Old Ones with a couple of cycle charging bits coming in there. You know, uh, one of the Stegodon went in with the cycle charge as, as then he pulls out. The other one comes in, continuous cycle charge in there from those two. Could have uh, done it there for them, maybe, but um, then they still would have had to take on uh, Cetra. So, Cetra's no slack in melee combat. Final only a best of three. So, we are going to be doing a best of five today. Now, it was the option to do a best of three. Uh, but these guys wanted a best of five as I offered them. They had the time. You guys wanted it. They wanted it. So a best of five it will be. I'm more than happy to throw up an extra game or two for you guys just to uh, enjoy the content. Enjoy the content. Logic telling me it's a best of five. They, they, they know it's a best of five, I think. Let's have an update the score yet. So it's going to be one apiece here. So let's just update that score. So it's going to be one apiece here. Yeah, if you're ever unsure, guys, in the description, I always try to have my challenge links in there. So you can just pop on into the challenge and you should be able to find uh, what's going on there. I think this game is going to be a pivotal game. This is where you're, I think games uh, like one and two, you're going to be seeing most of their main factions. Um, three and four, it's going to be like, Get either the first game or the second game where they get a pick so their first game should be their main faction in theory for most parts and then you're obviously going to be seeing or at least their second faction so coming into the third game or fourth games where you can start seeing some changes where you're going to start seeing some things that they're not as common with so you're going to be i think game three is quite a big um quite a big game here we enjoy all the content i appreciate that crow i appreciate that buddy that's really kind yeah so it's pick one band two for the best of fives and then till we get to the final. So game five is just a blind pick. So basically, they both send me a message of what they're going to pick of what they've got left. And then, yeah, we go from there. What I should probably do, just just in case we do go that far, um, it is possible, it is possible, but just in case we go that far. Right, so the first game, we had Brett. Versus Greenskins. And then we had uh, TK here for Dilatron. And we had uh, Lizardmen here for uh, for Mr. Cowboy Bob. So it looks like here we're going to be having Dark Elves and Empire. Very interesting. So... I'll go Empire, Ban, Dwarfs and Vampire Count. So yeah, two good bands indeed. Two good bands there for sure. Uh, looks like Dark Elves for Cowboy Bob. So Dark Elves here. And we will be having Empire here. Lovely jubbly. Lovely jubbly. Oh, that's okay, buddy. So uh, depending on which one you do uh, will depend on how it goes down, right? So if it's the best of one, in general, to make it as balanced as you possibly can, you pick three and you ban two if it's just the best of one. Uh, what that allows you to do is it gives you three factions you're happy to play against and then what your opponent does is they ban one of those three you've picked and then they pick one and then you pick one of the two you have remaining so it should give you the fairest matchup possible and then when it comes to the best of three what happens is is round one and round two is picked is pick one ban two and then the winner of round two then pick three and bands two is the same for the best of one. And then the best of five is just one, two, three, and four is band one, a uh, band two, pick one, and the final one is blind picks. So this should be a pretty interesting map. Uh, Shimmer Sword's pretty wide. You've got high level cannons for Dilatron. Uh, 450 range for some of those cannons. They're very good as well. Good armor piercing. Very good at dealing with cavalry. Uh, very good at dealing with large entities as well. Now with Cowboy Bob, you're more than likely going to be seeing probably the most powerful character at the moment, which is going to be Marathi. I think Marathi, Devil Manticore, is a certain, a very strong pick here. Uh, you're going to see some maybe, maybe lots of Dark Shards. 
good armor piercing. Not massive on the range, but you could otherwise see maybe some shades. Shades is also not a bad idea. Maybe see maybe seeing a Voltmar the Grim here. Sniping him out could be quite nice. Yeah, I'm I'm in your open chat. I thought he picked Empire, VC and Dawi. Oh, I see. <laughs> Indeed, Mr. Ice Power. How are you, buddy? I hope you're doing really well. How's things going for you? Speaking of the uh, Dark Elf legend, actually, Mr. Ice Power, I need to have a chat with you as well. Not just Mr. Papa P. I need to have a chat with you as well. I will be sending you a message afterwards. Both are ready. So here we are going to be having the favoured Dark Elves and up against the Empire. Ooh, ooh, that's a that's a bold uh, that's a bold statement. That's a very bold statement, Mister Hank Cyrus. That is a bold statement. Yeah, I could certainly agree with that, Ice Power. Indeed, cheeky secret messages. That's what I'm all about. That is true. Papa Palpatine coming in with the knowledge. Tretch. He comes in with some of the best abilities in the game. He pulls an artisan. I, I don't think an artisan build would work too well here. Because <laughs> he's already seen the artisan build. <laughs> Matthew and Voltmar are indeed good, but they exist on a pretty suboptimal. Yes, I, I could agree with that. They certainly bring up their rosters for sure, but they're still suboptimal rosters. Uh, three units, four, four units of flagellants here in the front line. Good unbreakable units. Spearman as well. This looks like a very similar build. This is exactly the same build that we saw, I'm pretty sure. But we are going to have a fire caster instead. Now, we uh, had an unfortunate net accident here with too many nets. But it's okay. We move on. Burning Head and Fireball will kindle flame. And we are going to be having the brilliant Marcus Wolfheart with the Hunter's Snare, Focus Shot, and some other good bits and bobs. So, very nice indeed. Still the same build. It's going to be four units of the Spearman Shields, four units of the Halberdiers, four units of the very nice Vigilance, including the Tatter Souls, three units of the Huntsman, including the White Wolves, and the Silver Bullets. Marcus Wolfhart and a Bright Wizard. From the front line here for the Dark Elves, though, we are going to be having lots of Dread Spears. Going to be having at least one, two, three units of Dread Spears. Looks like three units of Bleak Swords as well as some Witch Elves. So very nice indeed. In the sky, we are going to have Mama Marathi that's getting on her. She's going to be on her Dark Pegasus today. She will be having the Wand as well as Soul Stealer, Heart Render and the Dark Sword, Enchanting Beauty as well as the Greater Arcane Conduit. Over here on the left, we will be having a unit of the Scorchrunner Chariots, the Anti-Large Armor Piercing. Still, in my opinion, some of the best models you can get here for the Dark Elves. I really love Scorch Runner Chariots. Be very interested to know your opinion, Ice Power, but I do love Scorch Runners here for the Dark Elves. We are going to have the Anti-Large Cold One Nice, good Anti-Large Armor Piercing. We are going to be having two units of those on the left-hand side. And it's like none over here on the right-hand side with two Scorch Runners indeed. So it looks like no Mantis in the sky today. No Mantis. Okay. Yes, White Wolves. Yeah, you can have you can have white wolves. Why couldn't you have white wolves? What's illegal, uh, Rubain? I'm not too sure. Uh, white wolves are legal, I think. Yeah, you can have three units of uh, huntsmen. I'm pretty sure. Uh, so shots going down here on the Scorched Iron chariots. Uh, they're going to be shooting in the front line. I think they're a little bit close here to uh, to Daddy Marcus. So 
So big anti-large shots coming for the Huntsman. They're really trying to get into these Scorched Run Shadows. They've got to be careful. We don't want to take too much damage here. They want to be waiting here a little bit more now that they've seen some of the shots coming in. They want to wait just a little bit of time here, wait for that front line to get in and engage and uh, force the uh, attention here of the Huntsman and the Silver Bullets. So but it's also very nice, these four units in the pocket here are going to have Stalk, which is still very good. The Wand is going to come down on the Tatter Souls. That's a perfect one there. The Unbreakable is going to come down. Big hit there as well. Big explosion coming through. And it's like 12 models did go down. Being that they are very good here. 120 models, unbreakable. Brilliant stats as well. 48 melee attack is no joke when they're unbreakable as well. And uh, good immune to psychology. Unbreakable. Also coming in with quite a few abilities here, including strength of the pentant. Coming in with a plus 14 melee defense. 15% physical resistance when they are losing in melee combat, which can, hop and, can happen pretty often. Oh my god, the shots here coming on the Witch Elves. They're getting absolutely smashed here in this front line. Uh, they're getting hit so goddamn hard. Uh, they don't have any shields compared to the uh, other sisters. And they are just getting absolutely smashed here on this front line. Uh, they are going to break before they... Oh, those are they have hit the front line, but... Oh god, they've been hit hard. Uh, yeah, so coming through here on the front as well, we are going to be having some Dread Spears coming into the front. We've also lost the other Witch Elves. Soul Stealer coming in the back here on top of the Huntsman, two units, and also like it's going to be hitting the Spearman. So there's some nice stuff coming in from Marathi. Also, we have some Dread Spears that could really do with getting around the flank here and starting to shut down some of this back line. Guild Hold here coming out of Thilatron, this pocket is now wide and open to allow the Squadron Chariots to come in and do their work. As I care, the handgunners are ready. Fire going to go straight down the line here up against the score drawn chariot of Cowboy Bob. And he is certainly going to get hit hard here in the middle pocket. One chariot left, and they've certainly been dealt with. As I care, we are going to have a burning head in the back. And that burning head is going to be coming all over the cavalry. Very heavily armored cavalry. So the burning head there, quite interesting. But uh, burning head certainly comes down a little bit better here down the line of the Greek swords. Good charge coming in here, though. Oh, I didn't even realize we had the Shanesh Harvesters. But Shanesh Harvesters is very good here. 40% physical resistance that do come in with the Soul Stealer and Word of Pain. Shots are going to be coming in anti-large from the Huntsman. They are going to be firing straight into the heavily armored Cold One Knights. And looks like here, yeah, just to have two units of the Cold One Knights and Dread Spears and also the Shanesh Harvesters were solely fighting up against one unit of Spearmen. Could we do with getting them in the back and shutting down all the rest of this backline range? Nice wand here coming up against the Huntsman. Balance power hugely in the Empire favor. Uh, a lot of that front line has been very comfortably dealt with. We do actually have some units here in the back. We have some white walls uh, not quite getting involved. A little bit blobbed here, though, because then we do have a Soul Stealer going off. That is going to be healing Marathi quite nicely. Shots are going to come in, though, from the Silver Bullets. They're going to be racking into the skull here of Marathi. Fireball as well. Can it bend? It does bend. It smashes Marathi straight in the backside, and that's going to hurt. Another Fireball. How did that Fireball go off again? What? I'm not sure what happened there. But that was certainly two fireballs. I didn't make that up. That was two fireballs. I don't know how both those fireballs went off. But I might have to look into that. But another hit there going down on Marathi. Uh, big hits coming in from the anti-large shots from Marcus Wolfhart. And as we can see here, the cavalry is still going to be cycle charging. But going to be getting hit here by the halberdiers. It could have been a focus shot, but it looked like two fireballs. I'm 99% sure that was two fireballs. Uh, Marathi is certainly very weak here on the front. Marathi is going to break, and so is the rest of the army. GG's well played here for Dilatron. Fantastic build. It's a new bug logic. Oh, is it? Okay. Okay. Good to know. 2,445 here for Marcus Wolfhart. 840 from the Bright Wizard. 130. So 130. 160. A zero and 200 here from the Spearman. Didn't have to do too much. 120, 340, 530, and 27 from the Halberdiers with 400, 622, 330, 530, and 670 here from the Fagellants, including the Tata Souls. It's like 1,150, 750 here from the Huntsman, and also 750 from the ROR, the White Wolves. 850 here from the Silver Bullets, and a fantastically well built army here. A very good defensive build here from Dilatron. Very nice indeed. Now it does look like here we've got 823 here for Marathi, 91 and 500 from the Scorch Runner Chariot, 312 for the Bleak Swords, 213 and 88 here from the Witch Elves. They got just wrecked in that front line, unfortunately. But 360 here from the Bleak Swords with 250 here from the other unit. 
270 with 150 here for the Dread Spears, 240 and 377. 109 and 181 here from the Cold One Knights with 660 here from the Shanesh Harvesters. Doom Farm Warlocks are very nice in this build, I do like them quite a bit. Alright, so there's going to be a 2-1 here to Deltron. Fantastically close match here for both sides. Really, really nice to see. Uh, let's sort that out. So I just checked Discord and someone sent me a message. Uh, properties. And it's going to be a big 2-1 here for Dilatron. Now, the next map here is going to be... I can't remember what I selected. Oh, Southern Chaos Wastes. So that should be quite the fun one. Oh, there we go. I missed it. All right. Yeah, there is there is a missile bug where you can use certain spells when they're out of radius. Um, well, we do have ice power in ice power. What did you think about the build? What would you change? What would you do? Yeah, I think so too, Jason. I think it was a glitch, yeah. How would you have changed things, buddy? How would you have uh, approached it? What would you have changed for your beloved uh, Dark Elves? <laughs> See, they do care about us. They might not say it, but they do. I promise. So the first visual fireball didn't cause any damage, as far as I saw. Um, maybe I can send this. I'll tell you what, do me a favor, Biblington. Let me send you this, mate. Actually, it will be... I'll send it to you and Zypher. That's saved. So whilst I'm here, let me change this very quickly for you guys.
out of it. There you go, that should change that quite nicely. Perfect, right, I'm back with you guys, let's do this. All right, so Southern Chaos Wastes. It looks like we are gonna get a Skaven, banning Wood Elves and Chaos. Brilliant bands there from Bob, excellent bands. I really like those bands. Uh, let's see what Dilatron has to say. Best of fires really stretch out your factions, and that's a really good point from Dilatron. That's what. That's where you could really see. I think you can see more more in change of skill gap when you play bigger games. So best of five and best of sevens is where you really see the skill gap between players because it really stretches out your factions and your knowledge and your ability throughout the entirety of the game rather than just one or two factions. I only see. I only used the last one because it was really ice power. Yeah, Beastman makes sense. But what did you think of that last battle, Ice Power? Did you catch the Dark Elf one? I don't know if you saw that. I don't know if you can recommend any changes for Cowboy Bob. Um, it seemed quite a difficult matchup for him. I don't know if you what you would have changed in that last build. Anything there you could have done to alter it? Yeah, I think this is pretty Beastman favoured. So guys, it is going to be 2-1 here to Cowboy. If you guys are enjoying this content, um, I try not to say this too often, but if you do enjoy it, please smash that like button. It really helps promote the channel here. And also, if you really would like to support me a little bit more, please feel free to join the Discord and also smash that subscribe button. That will alert you guys of all of the content here coming forward on the, on, on the channel and it will alert you when it is going live. So that would really help here as I'm, as I'm you know, still obviously trying to grow. So that would be uh, very helpful if you guys could do that. I only caught the end. There is a reason I take Mama with the Mantis there. Terra so to, is vital to crack the back line. Yeah, I agree with that. And that's also kind of why I like the Winter Wolves as well. Winter Wolves are quite nice so that um, they come with immune to psychology so that um, they can negate that sometimes as well. How are you, Logic? I'm very well, thank you, Bobo. How are you? I hope you're doing well, buddy. From what I saw, there was literally nothing to prevent Chariot Cycle charge in the end in, in all the game yeah no mass and only one gun unit yeah there was one gun unit and three anti-large uh, huntsmen including the winter wolves what ice power what do you think of malekith on the sephron uh, yeah that's a good question Yeah, Chariot should get 2k each against that build, yeah. I think with top micro, you certainly could do. Mm, that's nice. Well, there was a net ice power. Yeah, there was a net. There was uh, Marcus Wolfhart. Marcus Wolfhart came in here with his nets. Yeah, due to the arc of fire, I think that, yeah, I agree with that. Huntsman ammo can be dodged. It takes a lot of micro, though. It does take a lot of micro. Kind of, dragons kind of suck, I think. I think they can be very good. I just think they've got to be used correctly. Ice power, the chariots got riddled by Huntsman on the way in. Yeah, they did. I think they, they kind of went in a bit premature. Okay, I will say this. Dragon Malekith is the best dragon in the game. Which means he's pretty goddamn bad. <laughs> oh, God. I'm doing okay, but I'm stuck doing math again. 
when I'm done, math again, you down for some Vermintide after I'm done? Yeah, possibly do. Can certainly play some Vermintide tonight for sure. Maybe do some more uh, Total War Hammer as well. VC Dragons are better than Malakiv, no? Um, in my experience, I would say so. I've, I, I've not seen any better Dragon plays than with, you know, you can pretty much guarantee a good Vampire Counts player will almost indefinitely get somewhere in the region of 2.7 to 3.5k from their Dragons. Blood Dragon, yeah, especially from the uh, Vampire uh, Bloodline as well. The, um, the Von Karstner Bloodline. Those guys do very well, I think, Papa Power Team. Let's hope Cathay gets some good dragons. Yeah, I think they should get some Chinese fireball dragons. They should get some really, really cool stuff, I think. No, VC dragons are taken because they're necessary for VC to have. Beastman time, Mr. Papa Pauper team! Right, let me send this message here. Let's copy that and throw this over. Give me one second, guys. Puppy. That's a message for you, Mr. Papa P. Feel free to read that. Okie dokes. Right. So it looks like Dillashon is ready. Uh, still waiting for Cowboy. Give me a Jabba Scythe. I do like the Jabba Scythe. They are good. Moo indeed, Mr. Pokerilla. Moo, Mr. Butcher Bird. Bring in the moos. Bring in the moos. Do you guys like spawn in this matchup? Um, against... I'm not sure they offer you what you can get somewhere else, I don't think. I think I'd rather go wider, I think. Okay. Perfect. Southern Chaos Waste. 2-1 here to Dilatron. Can Cowboy bring it back? That'll be very interesting. Very interesting to see. So we're going to be on the Southern Chaos Wastes. Do like this map. Do like this map indeed. It's got all sorts of terrain here to affect all sorts of artillery as well. And it should be pretty interesting to see how the Skaven uh, can deal with the very wide looking beastmen. That looks super wide. I think it's going to be 20 stack on 20 stack here. This could be uh, very interesting indeed. So for the beastmen, we are going to be having some centigors. So we have one, two, three units of centigors. And also we are going to have some Chaos Spawn. One, two, three, four units of Chaos Spawn. That's a lot of Chaos Spawn. We're also going to be having one Tuscal Chariot with a Silver Chevron. We're going to be having two units of the Ungor Raiders. For the front line, we are going to have some Ungor Spearheads as well. Looks like here we are going to be having 
one, two, three angle spear herds, three angle herds as well. And it looks like here we are going to have a Brochian with Wild on a Tuscal Chariot. Yeah, so he's going to be on a Tuscal Chariot with Traitor Kin and the Bestial Surge. And we're also going to be having Morg of the Shadow Gave with the Stave of Rudeness Corruption, as well as Spirit Essence of Chaos and all that good regeneration. And 75% Missile Resistance. Here for the very good Skaven, we are going to be having Gutter Runners here in the front line, Night Runners as well. Lots of bad boys here. Good, lots of 360 degree shooting, as well as three units of the Skaven Slave Slingers. In the middle pocket here, we are going to be having the Gracia Plague from Cowboy Bob with the Arcane Conduit, Vermintide, the dreaded 13th spell, Unholy Clamor, Scorch, and also Plague Rash with the Potence of the Venomous Doom. We are going to be having the Double Chieftain here coming with the Shield of Distraction, as well as the Power Grab. Very good here at protecting the big, bad Gracia Plague. Skaven Slaves here in the back with some very nice Clan Vulcan Tail Slashers for that 70% fire resistance. Some Council Guard Storm Vermin, double Wolf Rats with Poison, and quite the nice build in general. Kiting forward in the middle, looks like here that the Centre goes should be to catch up pretty quick here. You are going to need some Counter Punch though. Shots are going to come in in the front line here, so they're going to be trying to shoot the Bray Shaman Wild on that Tuscal Chariot. Tuscal Chariots, they should be able to run over half of this army. Tuscal Chariots are certainly very powerful in this current meta. Shots are going to be hitting up against the Bray Shaman. He has lost a couple of hundred points of HP. Someone in the front line, so we are going to be having some Clamorites in the back to try and put some pressure on the very nice Ungor Raiders. And so we have uh, Malagor as well as a unit of the Chaos Mon here trying to come and get the Gracia Plague. If we get a summon in the front here, we could really pin him in and do some very nice work over here as well. So he has been caught by the very nice armor-piercing Chaos. Can these Chaos spawn though? Can they do the business is the question. I'm not too sure. Looks like the Double Chieftain on top of the Hellions are going to be coming over to try and see if they can deal damage here against the very Shaman Wild. I don't know is the question. I don't know. Oh, big slam there. Oh, good pin in and stopping him there. Good damage on the Brayshaman and Wild. Brayshaman, though, is going to do some good damage back. Scorch coming down the front line here up against the Uncle Herds. Lovely Scorch there coming in from Cowboy Bob. Balance of power, though, is going to be hugely in the favor here of the Beastmen. A summon of the Chaos Spawn in the back as well. Very nice summon. Should be able to rip apart the Gracia Plague if given the opportunity. The uh, Clan Vulcan Town Slashers can certainly do getting involved here and assisting as well. More Scorchers coming in the back, and it looks like here the Ungol Herd is going to be trying to fight in this pocket. Tuscal Chariots have been caught as well. Looks like we are going to be breaking with some of the Scaven Slave Spears. Man's Power now starting to come back to even. It looks like some of this range has been imposed here by the Chaos Spawn. So we are going to be pinning in using the Scaven Slave Slingers. Slingers also going to be here shooting in the back up against the Ungol Raiders. And we also have some Gutter Runners as well. In the middle of pocket here, looks like down to half health is going to be the Gracia play. Going to be protected here by one of the Chieftains. Where's the second one? Second one here, uh, both have taken a bit of a punching, but the Tuscal Chariots have as well. Tuscal Chariots are going to be having three models, but they're going to be down here to 2,800. Bray Shaman down to 1,700 as well, taking quite a bit of a punching. Take out these two entities, and you could do pretty well here for the remainder of this battle. Looks like another summon, or the second summon here of the Chaos One has come in, which is going to be from that stave. Looking uh, looking pretty good here for the Beastmen, I think. It's looking uh, pretty nice, especially with the damage here coming out on the Chieftain. Cycle charging here from the Bray Shamu, that Tuscal Chariot here up against the Gracia Plague. Looks like here we also have some Chaos Swarm coming in. Nice charge on the Hellion. Can it do some damage? It might even break here. Oh, looks like we might have broken the Bray Shamu in a wild. It looks like he might get away with it. He might get away. Is that going to be Traitorkin? So Traitorkin has gone down. Damage and slow as well, which is very nice over time. That is going to allow the rest of this build here to catch up and maybe do some good damage on the Chieftain. Quite a lot of units here are going to be retreating. We can maybe try and see if we get a Dreaded 13th spell here. Nice explosion in the middle and then summon those Clam Rats in the... Uh, sorry, the Storm Vermin in the middle here. Try and get some of those uh, anti-large armor-piercing entities in the pocket. It looks like here we have the Council Guard Storm Vermin fighting up against Ungol Spearheads. They need to be in here protecting the Gracia Plague. They need to be involved, given that Guardian and assisting here with the Chieftains as well. Giving them all that 15% uh, physical assistance is very handy. Really don't want them fighting up against cheap, cheerful chaff. In the back here, looks like we did manage to get some Scaven Slaves back, but that's not going to be too pivotal here. What could be is getting these Gutter Runners back in. So it looks like that summon here is going to be chasing. Arcane Conduit coming down with him. A very nice uh, Scorch coming in the back. Um, not doing too much up against these entities, or against these monsters' infantry, I should say. No, he's looks like he's missed Michael. He might get caught here. A couple of swipes on the backside could hurt. Looks like that's going to be the way it is. Where is the... Oh, here they are. They are coming in. So it's like the Castle Guard Storm Vermin. That bell is going off. Unholy Clamor for the 16 leadership and plus 18% Vigor. Really going to aid in some of these combat. 
here is going to be someone of the clan rats. Yeah, clan rats is going to be able to pin here and really try and see if we can stop some of these entities from chasing up against the Gracia. But incoming here is going to be the Centigors. Centigors are going to come in and try and see if they can finish off the Gracia Plague. 720 HP for him, 580, less than 500 now for the Centigors. Can the Centigors hold? I think the Centigors will break here before the Gracia Plague does. So we have some uh, slingers here, not doing too much. They could really do with piling in on the chaos spawn. This is a really close game here that could go either way. We are starting to get the gutter runners back in. These could do some very good damage in the pocket. I think at this point you just need to ignore Morga. Morga's not going to offer anything else here to the rest of the battlefield, but you do need to deal with these chaos spawn. One chaos spawn now is going to be down to 670 HP. Both of these chaos spawn going to be down to 3.2 and 3,000. 11 models there and 11 here with only five left on the third unit. So in the back here, we have some Ungol Raiders and also some Ungol Spearmen coming back into the fixture. A couple of units over here, including some very fast center goals, could come back. Tusk or Chat going to be having three models of 1.8k. They've got to be very careful there. Another summon coming through here. And another unit of clam rats that should be able to pin in and do some good work. Pinning in there is going to be very nice, getting some more of those shots coming in. It looks like here the Night Runners, they don't have stupid stats. 29 melee attack should allow them to do some good damage here in the pocket. Also have the anti large uh, castle guard, good armor piercing, good bonus for large as well. Not massive weapon strength, but can certainly do some good work. 90 armor, very difficult to get through, good leadership as they are unbreakable. You're not going to get the poison coming in for the wolf rats as well. They're going to pin in and try and help some of the entities in the pocket. And this could certainly be a win for the Skaven. This has been very well played here by Cowboy Bob. And let's have a little look here. Are we going to get it? It looks like Arcane Conduit going off. Could we get another one of the bells going off? Plus 16 leadership here will certainly win the game. Shot's going to go in up against the Centigors as well. They're going to be hitting them quite hard. Looks like it is going to be a Shatter. Not quite army losses yet. Morgul is still going to be holding on quite strong. He's very healthy. Regeneration still in the pocket as well. Chaos Spawn is going to be going down 77 health with one model. It's going to be swiping to the very end here. Can Morgul get on top of this bell though? If he gets on top of the bell, could change the game. Now he does have poison and uh, he's not super quick is the problem. What are we looking at here? 39 speed up against 44 here of the, of the, uh, of the very nice uh, Grey Seer. Now he does have 75% missile resistance, so shooting into him is not really going to help. Poison Wolf Rat is going to be in the back, shutting down the Ungol Raiders. Balance of Power should now, should now start being shifting in the Skaven favour. I think a lot of the balance is almost entirely being held here by Morgul. Morgul got hit pretty hard, that did shift Balance of Power, and uh, he's certainly going to have a bit of a problem here. He does have Magic Resistance as well, I believe 25%. 25% indeed. Morgul's going to be coming in, he's going to be fighting here up against the Skaven Slave Spears. Shame, shame. It's like the Gutter Runners, 29 and 31 melee attack now going to be fighting here up against Morga. Morga doesn't have fear, so no negative to those leadership either. Another summon. And I say, oh, that's a, that was a that could have been a very nice summon there. Uh, sorry, summon. A very nice uh, Scorch there on top of the uh, Ungor Spears. So Chieftain coming through for a couple of swipes. It's like he missed. Oh, punch back there coming from Morga. Morga came through and just punched this guy straight in the face. But it's like the Chieftain took it quite well. Gracie Plague is going to be rolling around. Doesn't want to get hit here by the Tuscal Chariots, though. Hit from the Tuscal Chariots could really hurt. They could kill. They could certainly kill the Gracie Plague at this point. And so they have shattered, so they won't be coming back. We still have some Ungols in the back, but they are going to be fighting here up against the Gutter Runners. The rest of it here is pretty much going to break when they see any sort of combat. And now Surrounded is going to be Morgul the Shadow Cave. Balance Power is now shifting very hard, and I think that is game. He could break here very quickly. He has broken, and that is going to be army losses. GG's well played here to Cowboy Bob. He will be going through now to game five in the final with an excellent game here coming from himself. Awesome, awesome stuff. 121 kills, 770 damage value for the Grey Seer Plague. 880 with 433 for the Chieftain. 530 and 860 here for the Wolf Rats with Poison. 530, 505 here for the Night Runners, and uh, for the Gutter Runners, 880, 750, 1100, and also 626. It's like 300, 260, as well as 29 here for the Skaven Slave Slingers, and for the front line, 93, 76, and 173 here for the Skaven Slave Spears, with 250 for the Clan of Vulcan Tail Slashers, with 1467 here for the Council Guard Storm Vermin. Well played to Dilatron, a nice build indeed. 790 here for Morga with 159 kills, 1150 for the Bray Shaman. Not too much for the front line, looks like 137, 240 here for the Ungor Herds. 
100, 130, and 314 for the Ungor Spearmen. And that's like 109 and 440 here for the Ungor Raiders, with 380, 260, and 640 here for the Centigors. 1,100 for the Tuscor Chariots, 576 for the Chaos, 350, 975, and 300 for the Chaos Spawn. So the last map here should be Summer Song. Summer Song. Uh, should be down, right? No. Oh, it's summer, isn't it? Yes, not not summer. There we go. <laughs> Blind picks here is going to be uh, a little bit uh, needed more Jabba side. <laughs> How are we doing, Cal? Nice to see you here, buddy. Hope you're doing well. Nice to see you in the chat today. Hope you're having a uh, fantastic evening, buddy. Um, yeah, nice game. I enjoyed that thoroughly. Yeah, really well played to uh, Cowboy Bottom. So it looks like here, so we had uh, Skaven here, and then we had Beastmen. So for Dillashron, we've had Greenskins, Tomb Kings, Empire, and Beastmen. And for Cowboy Bob, we've had Bretonia, Lizardmen, Dark Elves, and Skaven. So uh, we still have Greenskins here for the side of Cowboy Bob. We also have Beastmen. Uh, we also have some other very strong factions in Chaos. I'm sure Dillashron here will more than likely come in with a Chaos pick, I think. I think Chaos pick is, is, is strong to come in here from Dillatron. And I think from Cowboy Bob, what are we expecting? I think probably a Beastman, I think. That's going to be my guess. Let's see what we got. Ah, oh, indeed. Oh, we have a thematic matchup for you, ladies and gentlemen. What a map. <laughs> just going to give them a minute. Just going to let it build up here a little bit in the uh, in, in the chat. <laughs> just going to let it stew a little bit. No, I mean, I mean, I'll stop. I'll stop. And... So I guessed one right. I did guess Chaos from Dilatron, but Cowboy is going to be going with Empire. A pretty solid matchup indeed. I did. I can't wait to get kited. <laughs> uh, maybe make sure they send it privately. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they sent it on Discord. War of the Beard. Listen, it wasn't the War of the Beard. It was the War of the Slicing Off of Ears of those Pointier Princesses. The, we're, the war that we won. Don't you forget that, Hank. Don't you forget that. <laughs> Beastman Wood Elves is probably like just as iconic as Chaos and Empire, I think. But uh, this is still going to be pretty good. Yeah, we'd already had Beastmen for... So we could have... I, yeah, I, I still think this is going to be a great matchup. I think it's going to be a great matchup. Should be a great matchup indeed. Alrighty, so...
Gunpowder vs. Armor is the stuff of legend. Yes, Krell. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Dowie, Dowie lost just as much as High Elves. Yeah, I mean, it did It did butcher both sides. There, there is no doubt about that. There is no doubt. So we go through to the scoreboard. Scores on the doors. Two apiece here. For some reason, I can't change it. Aha. OBS is caught up. And there we go. Two apiece. It's going to be two apiece. It should be very, very interesting here in the finals. Give me just 10 seconds. I will be right back. Real winner is my boy Mama. Mama issues. Watch out, Logic. I'll 1v1 you. Oh, you want to 1v1 me, bro? Let's go. Let's do this. So would this be... So would this be the first in order or the last in order of your match of the day style vid? So the way that would work is when the league starts, what you guys will do is you'll send in your replays. I'll show you all how to do that. And basically you send in your replays so I can go through all of the games and grab, um, I'll grab the images. Um, and then I'll be able to watch the games and then what I'll do is I will cast little snippets of them. That probably add up to like two minutes for each one. Uh, for the week and then I'll put them all together and the way it would work is it would probably start from the Urquhart Miners and move all the way up to the Peak Gate Guards and it would work through that way and then after each after I've done each section I'll go through this is what the scores were this is how it changed the table and then this is how it's looking this week you know and it'd be sort of um, it would sort of go a little bit like that this this style of tournament we have here is how the, Nor the Norgrimlings tournament is going to go. So the Norgrimlings is going to be a tournament, whilst the other leagues that you guys are going to go into is going to be a league. Anybody can play in the tournament, and the tournament will finish the series, will finish off Season 1, essentially. Uh, all, the, all the close stacks in one pile, yeah? I'm uh, getting a... Um, Gonna be getting a chest of drawers. I haven't got one yet, so I'm gonna be getting one so I can shove all of my. Uh, so I'm gonna be uh, sorting that out soon. <laughs> I'm a troll rush. Oh, Bobo's coming in with a prediction. Yeah, I'm a troll rush. Okay. How many? Midget ROR levels will there be? Hey, right, listen, you behave, Hank. I'm gonna listen, Hank. Listen, there's gonna be four, yeah. There's gonna be Urquhart Miners. There's gonna be the uh, Warriors of the Dragonfire Path. There's gonna be the Grumbling Guards, and there's gonna be the Peak Gate Guard. So there'll be four. And the Nor Grimlings will be at the top. And my book is still in the goddamn mail, man. I haven't got it yet. I was meant to get my book about four days ago. How can you pick your level? So your level will be decided on how well you did in this tournament. And then what I'll do is I'll put you in... 
I'll send you guys out a link of your your level where I send it out, and then uh, we'll see what you guys think of where you're at. If you'd like to go up and down or you'd like to move around, we can have that discussion first before we start the first league, for sure. But I'll be taking some things into consideration, for sure. And the highest will be anointed at, of Assyrian. There's no Assyrian in these leagues, Rebane. You can try all you want. The Assyrians, uh, they're below the Urkra miners. I might even put them below Skaven Slaves, I think, you know. Alright, both are ready. We're on Summer Song. And this is going to be the final game here of the Shortbeard Tournament. Can I identify as the Sky Bomber? <laughs> Um, so that was part of the joke last night in the discussion was, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm starting a league. So it's going to be a league. Uh, there's going to be, it's going to be called the short big league. That's going to be the league for the new players. And I'm thinking about making a league as well here for a very competitive side. Uh, it's going to be a very competitive side league as well, where, uh, there'll be invitations for that very, very, um, strong league. Just for noobs eyes. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. Just for newer players. Listen, Rebane. You and your smelly Phoenix guard can stay away from me. <laughs> if they don't have beards, they're at least five foot long. Don't want to know about it. So, we're going to have some Marauder Horsemen here in the front line. It's like one, two, three of these bad boys. Two units of the Poisoned Warhounds and a unit of the Marauder Horsemen in the back. Oh, I'm a noob too. Just forced me to not play Dark Elves. I mean, I thought you were a noob when you played Narc Elves, but all right. <laughs> jokes. Jokes for the side. Right, so. Uh, Dragon Ogre Shagoth here. Anti-large armor piercing. As well as the ROR Chaos Spawn. They're going to be having armor surrounding all the nice bits and bobs as well. So, here in the middle, we are going to have some Chaos Marauders. And the Demon Spew Forsaken as well. So, they're going to be having the nice swarm of flies. And Frenzy with the poison. Very good. A little bit low on the melee defense, but as long as they're uh, supplemented inside other infantry, they do pretty well as well. We also have the other Marauders, more Forsaken, and Chaos Marauders. But now, all jokes aside, um, Life Pad's very good. When he wants to be. When he's not memeing, he's very good. So, in the final here, we are going to have two Pistoliers. Uh, very good 360 degree shooting. Good speed as well. Coming with 90 speed. We're also going to be having great swords in the front line. One, two, three. Five great swords, excellent stuff as well as a warrior priest and a jade wizard. So the warrior priest here will be coming with all its bits and bobs, I imagine. Oh, it's not going to be coming with the banner, but it will be having shield of faith, the soul fire, and the hammer of Sigma. And in the sky, we are going to have Mr. Karl Franz. So we are going to have the Garbaraz, the, the rattling rune fang, as well as stand your ground, hold the line, and the blood roar. We'll be having earth blood. Uh, also be having regrowth and power stone here for the jade wizard on foot as well as the demogriff knights in the back <laughs> two units of demogriff knights to make it um, even more so instead of the outdoor griff fights two demogriffs is going to be very good here shorts coming in though from the pistol is and let's get forward let's get involved so looks like here in the middle we are going to be having soft the ever chicken so soft here what's he got today he looks like he's going to be having foreign transportation and the plague of rust He's going to be fighting in the pocket though, up against the Warrior Priest. Right limb, Rune Fang for the Increased Melee Attack, Hammer of Sigma, Stand Your Ground, Shield of Fate as well here. Really going to be slamming into Sarthriol. This guy is on steroids right now. This guy is absolutely thumping Sarthriol. And so we have a Soul, soul Fire coming in the pocket as well, trying to hit up against the Demon's View. And Sarthriol is now coming to punch back now, all those stats are gone. Yeah, it looks like here though as well, the Dragon Ogre Shagoth. You've got to be very careful here. And that's the problem with having the J Wizard on foot. Uh, very easy to snipe. Poison Warhounds coming in the battle, so we're going to have a charge from the lovely looking Demogriff Knights. Demogriff Knights here, they're going to be doing some good work here up against these bad boys in the pocket. Doing some really nice work here and should be able to break those pretty quickly. Great Swords fighting in the front line here up against the Demon Spew and Forsaken. They're going to be anti-infantry and armor piercing. So we have some arrows coming through from the Marauder Horsemen as well. Firing into the middle though up against the Dragon Ogre Shagoth, I imagine, from the Pistoliers. Yep, certainly going to be forcing their fire in here up against the Dragon Ogre Shagoth. Big hits though coming in from Sarthril, Arcane Conduit for him as well as that Terra. So we have the spawn as well, trying to move through with that armor sundering. And here we do, we do actually have the Warrior Priest on foot. He's going to need to run away a little bit, doesn't really want to engage in this combat too much. Looks like we are going to be saving, we are going to be saving uh, Carla Franz for a later day. 
Uh, he could do with coming in now. You cannot afford to lose your Jade Wizard. That is for sure. You can certainly not afford to lose him. Uh, losing your Jade Wizard here will be game over, I think. Because there's just not going to be enough on Carla Franz. Uh, looks like he's going to give up on his Jade Wizard. Uh, but Carla Franz has like, not got involved yet. Carla Franz needs to do something here. If he doesn't do something soon, uh, it's going to be game over. Chasing the Skirmish Cavalry is not in his uh, benefit. Uh, you're going to be losing your Jade Wizard and all your healing for Carla Franz. He's such glass cannon. And you're also going to be losing your Warrior Priest. You do actually have uh, Great Swords coming in. Uh, they have some good armor piercing, but they're not really designed to deal with the Dragon Ogre Shagoth. You have Terrified and Broken um, the uh, very nice Jade Wizard. 50% missile resistance for Sarthriel as well. Not very good if you're going to be firing using Pistoliers. You're not going to get much damage there. Carla Franz now is also taking a bit of a punching. He's going to be down to 3,200 HP, trying to fight up against Skirmish Cavalry that have more speed than he does. Uh, Sarthriel is going to come in, try and aid in here. What's this going down? This is going to be the uh, Shield of Faith, Hammer of Sigmar, Stand Your Ground. In does come Carla Franz now. He's going to fight him against the Dragon Ogre Shagoth. Do we have Galmaraz? Galmaraz is not going down though. He does come in for the swoop. He does get the big hit. But uh, looks like he's going to be down to half health here for the Dragon Ogre Shagoth. <laughs> Pistolets could really do with focusing down the Dragon Ogre Shagoth if at all possible. Yeah, I think Dragon Ogre Shagoth is the one to shoot. Only has 70 armor. Uh, Warrior Priest has got yeeted halfway across the Summer Song. Uh, he's got hit pretty hard here. The very nice Ever Chicken, though, is going to do some work. That Terror is so difficult to deal with. We do actually have the brilliant Demogriff Knights here coming and pinning him in. Hopefully trying to do some good damage, but we do have the anti-large armor piece of Dragon Ogre. And I don't know. Carla Francis is just chasing off Skirmish Cavalry. He needs to kind of get in here, in my opinion. He, he can chase off Skirmish Cavalry. But, yeah, you don't know if you have enough tools here. Because they're not going to be anti-large. You have armor piercing from the Demogriff Knights. And it's like Soulfire is going to go down. And try and see if we can do some damage up against Arthur. But Arthur has 25% uh, magic resistance as well. Uh, looks like the Poison Warhounds could break. Uh, so there is going to be a healing here. And Earth Blood is going to be overcasted. No, just normal Earth Blood, so no risk there to damage. Charge coming in from the nice Demogriff Knights. <laughs> so we have some more Great Swords coming back into the pocket. We are going to be having the Warrior Priest here fighting a little bit of lag. But the Warrior Priest is going to be fighting here on his own. Big hits coming in from the Dragon Ogre Shagoth. Healing Cap now is starting going to be present here for the Warrior Priest. And we can certainly use um, some assistance here. Hammer Sigma, Plague of Rust though going down on top of the Demogriff Knights. Putting them down to 95 armor. Should really aid in South Thrill and Dragon Ogre to remove them. A big hit here hopefully coming in from Carla Franz. Rightling Rufang, Gumbaraz going down as well with the increased bonus for large armor piercing and 24 melee attack. Leadership with these two fighting up against each other. You can hit South Thrill nicely here. Looks like you're not going to get away with it. You're not going to get the use from Galmaraz and the right in room fan. That could cost the game. Uh, the fact you're not going to get those benefits and he's now going to go away and not use them. Yeah, that's dangerous. That's dangerous. Um, I don't know what we've got left here for the Warrior Priest. Uh, we are going to cycle charge in for Carla Franz. Galmaraz and also right in room fan still going to be online. Earthblood as well. How long is he going to get this in for though? Good hits coming into Sarthriol. They're still going to be going. And it looks like he is going to cycle away here. He is going to get hit, though, by the Dragon Ogre Shagoth. Do we have a do we have a regrowth here is the question. Power Stone going down. Regrowth might be in the pocket for Carla Franz. Regrowth could really pull balance of power here. Sarthriel is going to be fighting in the pocket. He is unbreakable, so getting rid of him is going to be difficult. Removing the Dragon Ogre might be the better option here. Stand your ground going down for the plus 24 melee defense and 16 leadership. Then it's going to be hard to punch off the Dragon Ogre. We are going to be having Stantra Down going down from Carla Franz as well. Demogriff Knights coming in as well as the Warrior Priest Shield of Faith going down for the plus 20% damage resistance. Carla Franz is getting absolutely smashed here in this middle pocket. Balance of Power is now heavily shifting into the Chaos favor. Earthblood going down to really try and assist Sarthriel. Sorry, trying to go and help negate Sarthriel's damage. He is going to heal. He is going to be in the sky. But I think this force alone on the floor here is not going to work here. Getting yeeted here in the background is going to be the Jade Wizard. Negative 12 from Carla Franz. I don't think we're going to see him back. <laughs> Looks like here, Demogriffs are going to be going down. Warrior Priest is going to be going down. Uh, yeah, I think that's GG's. That's going to be Balance of Power. Very good and well played here to Mr. Dilatron, who will be today's winner of the Short Beard Tournament. Fantastic stuff from him. Excellent, excellent gameplay. And um, I love the tournament here today. Fantastic stuff. Not enough triple handguns, me no likey. Look, we know you love your triple handguns there. Wrong priorities with Carl here. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking, yeah.
Empire Steel still seems to be winning, but I think running off the skirmish cavalry was not the chance. First King Chicken was a mistake. I, you needed to focus the uh, Dragon Ogre, in my opinion. If you focus Dragon Ogre and broke it, you have no you have no protection here for Sarfadil. For sure. What an excellent uh, best of five, though. What an excellent, excellent best of five. I must admit, that was an excellent game. So, 502 here for Carl of Franz. And it looks like here we've got 983 for the Warrior Priest. 1,675, 1,436 for the Demogriff Knights. Uh, 750, 500, 580, 511, and 830 for the great swords. Pistol is 1,053 and 242. We've got 2,060 for Sarthrol, the Ever Watcher. 270, 280, 230, 260 for the Chaos Marauders. 680 and 1,300 for the Demon Spew Forsaken. Very good for the negative uh, melee attack. 375 here for the Chaos Chariots. Uh, 850. 860, 720, and 800 here from the Marauder Horsemen. So you've got 130 and 430 from the Chaos Warhounds with Poison, 1000 here from the ROR Chaos Spawn, and 2330 from the Dragon Ogre Shagoth. Looks like they've both gone, but GG's well played, guys. Excellent games here from everybody. Uh, GG's, well played Dilatron, and thank you Logic for the great evening's entertainment. Absolutely no problem guys, I really hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please smash that like button, it would really help me if you do want to support the channel. You can also subscribe as well, that would be very kind if you guys do want to do that on this, on this grow for me up towards um, 1,000 subscribers. I feel sorry for this Empire build with the new and improved fine transportation. Yeah, it is good. It is good. Cheers for organizing Logic. Looking forward to the league. Yeah, the league will be set up very, very soon here. So uh, congratulations to, uh, to Dilatron and uh, well played. And thank you very much for everybody else that did participate today. We will be setting up some interesting stuff coming forward. Uh, impressing. Oh, I'm, I'm glad. Build wasn't wide enough. Well... It, it was still a good build, uh, Cowboy Bob. I think a little bit of target priority there could have aided, but I think you still played excellently well, and you should hold your head up very high here today up against all of the odds. You played excellently well, so well played to you, my friend. Well played indeed. Yeah, some very good fights, Bob. And a best of five here is uh, certainly no joke when you go to game five to finish on. Uh, both of you are winners here. Both of you are winners. So going forward here, we will be starting with the league. Uh, we will be going down here with some prizes as well. As always, you know me, there'll be some prizes for all the big winners here for the tournaments. It looks like here, we'll open this up. It looks like I will be sending you guys over as well. So let's try and see if we can hop in here. Chasing them off. Cause... So let's hop in here. So it looks like Dame is going to be streaming as well. So I'll be sending you over to her in a minute. And let's see if we've got anybody else online. Um, it doesn't look like anybody else is going to be online. So I'll be sending you guys in a few different places. <laughs> oh, it looks like I've got a couple of you to subscribe. Uh, well, it looks like, I'm sorry, a couple of you have subscribed. So thank you very much for that. That's, that's really kind of you. Um, let's open this up here. Uh, so let's go and... So for guys, if you do want to go watch some more content here, I am going to be sending you over here. This, if we paste that, that there is going to be uh, Dame. That's going to be Dame Offensive. Uh, if you guys do want to watch a little bit more content from me, I did do a tournament on Friday, which is the Battlemania Season 4 Week 4. So go in and check that out as well. You guys, I'll post that there for myself. Um... So if you want to watch some more multiplayer, you have Battle Mania. If you want to go watch Dame and she does some excellent um, does some excellent single player stuff, you can go check that out. But thank you very much for all of you guys that watched. Thank you for all of you that have participated. Take care of yourself during these times. We'll have the league up and running soon. So lots more content, lots of good stuff coming forward. Also with the Battle Mania final coming this week. So take care of yourselves and I'll see you all very, very soon.